they were so nice uh, to see Gambit, you know, evolve in that matchup and stop being the scared little brother. And I'm going to go ahead and say that Gambit is probably the best thing that ever happened to Navi as being yeah. now their challengers and forcing them to become better. And, and I've seen Navi become better now that they are losing to Gambit, which is a very paradoxical thing to say. But I think these two teams now mutually influence each other to become better. And I think that's amazing to see. Add some fun to your space with Extrify. Designed in Sweden with focus on quality products built on experience. You're looking at Project 4. There are four generations of products with super cool colorways to stand out, with matching sets to satisfy with a solid B4 Bungie, lightweight ergonomic M4 mouse, the K4 keyboard is fantastic, all of which are performance focused, and finish it off with colorful GP4 mouse mats that are bold in design and smooth on the surface. The retro theme in particular has got the feels. Complete your setup with Extrify. No regrets, guaranteed. Go to the teammates. I want to see you fall and fast. Win the round. Win the game. Parry match. Your esports teammate. Hey buddy, let me show you how to fix that. Bitskins.com. Buy and sell skins instantly. Deposit and withdraw funds instantly with crypto or directly to your Visa card. Bitskins.com. The best skin marketplace. Hey, to TV Confirmed, Season 5, Episode 46. I don't know why the fuck we're still bothering with seasons. Maybe we just go to episodes. That's something we'll have at our next meeting. Uh, we have meetings every Tuesday morning, 9 a.m. on the dot, because we take this show very fucking seriously. Wait, anyway, you guys have meetings? Yeah, you're not invited. That's why when we're doing these pre-shows, like what we just did in the 30 minutes before, it's so fucking stressful. Anyway, <laughs> the show is powered by Extra 5. Built on experience. That's the tagline on the top of their website, extrafy.com. If you want some peripherals, check them out. We just found out that their mouse pad is four millimeters thick, didn't we, Striker? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Parry Match. <laughs> They're also a sponsor of the show. Gamble responsibly. That's all I'm going to say. Gamble responsibly. And uh, Bitskins, buy and sell CSGO skins and items. That's their tagline. I looked on it. I didn't realize websites at the top in the Chrome thing had taglines. That's where I stole it from. Uh, anyway, our audio-only listeners, for those of you who are enjoying the dulcet turns of Chad Burnshall into your ears right now, uh, here's a taste of uh, tonight's agenda. We've got uh, retirement versus a change of career path. A bit of that happening in recent times. We've got the Star Ladder CIS RMR event, which is on right now with the grand finale. And uh, the return to land with IEM Cologne. Uh, you can get all that on anchor.fm slash HLTV. It's available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many, many more. Uh, all right, let's get this one underway. Let's stop messing about here. Uh, as always, we're joined by Lucas. He's the man behind the camera pressing all the buttons. Uh, this is what he sounds like. Lucas, make any kind of noise, word, oh anything you want. No, I'm... Hello, this is There me. you go. That's perfect. That's all we needed. That's great. Striker, um, yes. I'm going gonna to bring you into this one. Uh, people on aerop airplanes and airports in 2021, how does it make you feel? Uh, about the same as uh, when I started traveling 2013 through 2019. So there you go. Okay, people are still dumb. Uh, yeah, that's established. Exactly. But there's just no care for other that's human just things. The same. It's just the same shit every time, right? Like people just get up, like just as the as, as the plane even lands, like it doesn't even get to the gate or anything like that. People just stand up as if like they haven't been on a plane before. Maybe they haven't. I don't know, but I That's expect the that they probably yeah. have. Most of most people probably been on a plane like once or twice in their lives, and we've, we've been on planes hundreds of times, so it pisses us it, off. It just tilts us. Yeah. Okay. Most of the other people are just but, like, this is such a new experience. Oh, this is exciting. Let's do shit. Is it exciting, though, when the woman at the front of the plane, as you land in three separate fucking languages, says, because of health and safety with the COVID <laughs> bullshit going around the world, please do not stand the fuck up 
when the plane lands because we're going to get you to disembark rows at a time. And then these dumb cunts still stand the fuck up. And I'm just sitting there. And at this point, I'm no longer just being civil chatted with these headphones in, just sleeping against the thing. I'm sitting there. This woman has said it in three languages. She can speak three languages and you're not going to listen to her. And you still stand the fuck up and you block the row. And then she has to go, excuse me, sir, can you please sit down in three languages? Because you don't want to use your fucking ears, you selfish fucking cunts. Anyway. Anger aside, we've decided that people on aeroplanes are shit. Let's keep going. I'm fucking feeling it today, boys. We're going to leak out with the aggression. Um, okay, Prof, you got anything to say to your by fucking LAGGE15? You got what? anything for him? Oh, Laggy15, you got anything uh, for him? Because uh, not, he, not really. he, wants, he wants to make sure that we're taking this shit seriously, Prof. Yeah, we need to take it more seriously. Obviously, after last last week's fiasco of uh, scheduling our uh, show over an ESA premiere quarterfinal upper How bracket match, fucking could we? We uh, we just stepped it up today, so we schedule it across uh, grand final of the CIS, CIS RMR. So just to show that it's not about like. But fucking up the low, low little guy we're just fucking up everyone and that, that's it yeah that guy has some some things going on upstairs that he should probably get checked out it's great to be passionate it's another thing to be a fucking dick so um shout out to that guy um <laughs> all right maniac <laughs> you're here today uh i'm glad we have you because you can help with my my mental issues <laughs> you're plentiful uh, i mean so... he is qualified there's a lot yeah. to tackle right there's a lot to tackle uh, this introduction i don't even know how we ended up already <laughs> ranting about people and how they behave in planes that was way too fast for me i was still you know getting in the zone I'm like okay this this is how we do it all right i've got to just take my notes right there we're going to start a session live on air <laughs> Well, we're close to each other. You're probably a couple rooms that way. You, can, if any, if it gets too out of hand, okay, you can, it. you can. Uh, if I'm freaking out, just smash down punching. the door. I'm in three, two, eight. So you can come and save me. You're actually um, next to me. Oh, you're you actually next to me. There well, you go. Well, this is this. We're, we're back on LAN, and we're basically <laughs> doing a LAN podcast right now. So this is probably as close as it's going to get. Now, Matthew, you uh, you went to a lovely place. I'm going to link it to Lucas to show everybody because Lucas, I linked it to you. That's a tweet. Bring this one up for everybody at home. Where the where where this the fuck is this maniac, place? Maniac small holiday tweets are yes. annoying but, as fuck. That I'm view is sorry. amazing. Where is that? This is so. This is the uh, the Birkenstock Hotel in Lucerne. Uh, it's it's one of the best hotels you can have in Switzerland. And the story is that my my lovely father had birthday on the twenty first of June, and he went into retirement, and so I took it upon myself to to buy a, a Holy room shit. for the family. And we went together with the family uh, to enjoy the view. And it was a uh, look. I, I I don't come from. I come from a middle class, right? I never needed anything when I was young. I think I went to school. I had clothes on me. I had everything, right? But but we we never had money properly in the family. And and so now that things are looking better or slash good for me, uh, I feel very happy that I can provide that kind of experiences for my parents who have given everything for me from day one until now 31 years of age so uh this was yeah this was this on Bergenstock with me and my family and yes indeed it is absolutely crazy insane yeah it looks, looks what quite I'm, beautiful what i'm taking from that is maniac is rich i'm doing okay for now there but you, you know with the weekends like these it can disappear really fast <laughs> <laughs> really really fast yeah, well, it shows that you're a good son. I haven't seen my parents in two years. So, uh, you know, you're a shit son. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the first to admit it. I let my mum know all the time I'm shit. Um, all right. So this is great. This is the intro that we've all we were all hoping for. Um, so, Lucas, run the thing. Let's get into the recent news, shall we? Ooh. All right. Uh, so because I'm locked in a hotel in uh, Katowice, Poland, and I, I don't really have a whole lot of things I can do on a Sunday, I uh, actually prepped for tonight's show. So we're going to get this one rolling, and I'm going to send links to Lucas. He's going to bring them up, and there's going to be a lovely visual element for everybody playing at home. So uh, first cab off the rank uh, is some breaking bloody news. Um, now, this is was was written by Mira, if I believe it uh, rightly, uh, and uh, it's to do with Zonic, who is uh, apparently pondering leaving Astralis as uh, his contract nears end. Now, that was me just reading the title of the HLTV uh, yeah, post. Yeah. Now, that's, uh, that's the, as far as your preparation goes, I guess. No, no, no. <laughs> I even took a little excerpt here that I liked that said, the 34-year-old coach whose deal expires on December 31 is contemplating a future away from Astralis after growing disillusioned with the team's direction. 
One source said tension between the team and the organization had been building for several months with contracts of the core members of the squad set to expire at the end of the year. Um, I'm going to get into into reading. Uh, okay. Like audio books. Audiobooks. I was audiobooks. liking it. I was liking it. For I was children. ready. For, was for ready. children. Yeah. Yes. That's where I see your face actually after CS. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'll make sure the swear words are out of there. Um, all right. So this one is obviously huge news, um, but it's it's kind of in line with with the murmurs that we've been hearing for some time um i don't even know who wants to take this one does anybody anybody want to spill the beans on the stuff they've heard around the astralis camp or uh is this is this shocking to anybody i think the timing is shocking i think the timing is shocking now that we are rolling you know around the corners with IEM cologne um the fact that changes were around the corner for astralis is, is not really a surprise i mean you take all the elements you take all the factors into consideration and you think maybe there is a there is a new page that has to be turned, but the fact that 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 news that that rumor whatever we want to call it comes out now that we're actually going to get back into IEM Cologne and and arguably a moment where Astralis could shine on land because blah 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 we're going to get into this uh, further down the road. The timing of it is is what I find a bit crazy, right? So it's either going to destroy them or it's going to make them united. I just I just don't really know. And we feel like they're already dead though, like. Do we yeah, think that this Australia yeah, was does. like I'm not saying that they couldn't perform and do well, right? The, the, yeah. This still has the the core there. It's still an amazing, you know, team, um, at least on paper and what they could at their peak achieve. But like in terms of this team going forward, without some, I wouldn't say massive overhauls, but without a personnel change or two, they probably wouldn't be seeing themselves in you know the the top three conversation yeah. anytime soon, right? So we knew that there was some changes needed to happen. Um. I think, yeah, obviously rumors were flying around uh, something along the lines of, of this, maybe some player changes. Um, obviously, as, as we saw, this team didn't really deliver like this whole situation that they have now, the pre-oping, the players that they have uh, without device hasn't been working out. So they obviously need uh, a bigger change as well in terms of the personnel. And then all of the rumors about certain players not really liking what's going on in the org and the org player, bad blood, whatever. And I mean, even device leaving in the way that he did also kind of plays into a similar, similar thing. So from that perspective, it's, um, it is weird at the same time. I, I think you wouldn't actually expect Zonic to, to be the one leaving. Like he's the guy that can stay and rebuild. Like he is not definitely the issue in itself, uh, to, 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 to a rebuild. Right. Um, so th that's the part that can maybe be shocking. I think it's pretty shocking to to a lot of people just seeing seeing the news come out at this moment. At the same time, I feel like this could actually be a good thing for Astralis. Like their 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 PR is so deep in my brain that I'm already thinking like, oh, let's see. how how could they how could make this make this sound like a good move for them? But but just having like a fully fresh start and leaving the you know, the legendary four major winner team behind them and being like a new team, I think that could that could help, even though it's that would require them to actually admit that they're no, no longer that team, uh, which I don't think they are really uh, willing to do, at least not yet. OK, well, it's kind of crazy that uh, just multiple people are just willing to jump the ship, right? Even though, like, relatively speaking, you know, Astralis hasn't been doing like badly right obviously they're not the astralis that we knew but you know up to the point the device left at least we they still took some titles home and you're you know they were still competitive and in this online era very very few teams have been able to be consistent so there's it just doesn't seem like results wise there was such a motivation to just like break up the team right and this like almost extreme way where like the coach the coach and player that has been with them basically from the start are just willing to just go all go off and join whatever like device mm -hmm. just joins a straight up worst team in, uh, on paper, right? And Zonic, who knows what's in his future at this point. So it kind of speaks to how, I guess, they didn't really like, uh, as the article says, right? Like the direction of the team and the mm. direction of the organization and the way that they've dealt with some of these changes. Zonic was pretty vocal about, you know, not wanting to get rid of um, Tag, right? Get, yeah, exactly. To to let S Attack go, which just the organization did pretty much on their own. That was pretty clear from. From what Zonic said in that uh, one comment around that uh, around that situation, so just all of it is coming together, and it's kind of like it's not a good look for the organization. I have to say, like this is a really bad look, if 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 anything. 
But this is the thing, right? Like Richard and Duncan have been talking about the the nefarious activities of Astralis and the players not being happy with this for ages. Now we're just finally starting to see it, it rear its head or be manifested in murmurs like this, right? So it, I don't think it's the first we're hearing of it. It's just the first that we're actually starting to see cracks and those cracks are being facilitated by contracts ending. Because if one thing you can say about the Astralis players, other than being the, the greatest team of all time, is they're bloody consummate professionals, right? Like they... they they get it done, right? And then they're not going to step out of line. Whereas now, obviously, these murmurs can start. It's curious for me to, to see what happens with Zonic's career as an individual. Like, does he want to continue coaching? Because I don't think there's any argument that he's the best coach, right? Like, I, I feel like... We, Historically, we, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so we like he has so much brand value there. Does he want to spend more time at home? You know, I follow the guy on Instagram. He's got some kids, he's got a lovely yeah. family. Does he want to spend more time at home? You know, if he wants to do that, we're, we're going to get back into event season hopefully soon, or we're starting mm. to now, right? So that's going to be a, a life change too. Uh, I mean, well, he, he can surely find find a different job that, that isn't coaching right in in cs or in east could, like could be like a gm he or can something, do anything right? yeah i think yeah, yeah i think he like... should he should definitely not do analyst i think uh i was gonna know, say from state our job over there no yeah, <laughs> yeah you're right look the, the, the thing about ozonic as well if you uh it's it's obviously un, not debatable that he would be an asset to any team that could potentially get him right uh but i feel like from from what he experienced in this incredible synergy he had with players and the success they had and this whole little dream or legendary run they had, I feel like it could only go downfall from there, like only go downhill. I don't see how he could find a new, completely different team and then find again this magic formula and win again. Not, not that he's not able to, but just it was just, you know, this, uh, again, I use the word synergy between the squad and themselves, the fact that they knew him, they, they respected him, all, everything came together for him to become the... Oh, I want to say the first image or example of what the best coach can be in the world, right? It that in that specific context. So where do you go from here? I think he he he's done enough, and he could just enjoy you know watching Counter Strike for for what it's worth because he's he's already paved the way. Like he's he's been the greatest. That's already done. True. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that's one of the things. Like, is how far do you want to push it? If if he wants to, if he wants to show that he can do it elsewhere then that becomes a question of like he could go anywhere mm -hmm. he wants he could even have he could even have an org come to him and he could build his own team but yeah. depending on how that goes is is like you're saying Matthew, is the sense that if if it goes shit well that's what we're talking about with like people who uh, like tarnish their their records right like they go they they they're great and then they then they let time be the destroyer of it right because what we're mm -hmm. going to remember is their most recent image and if they go out on the bottom and not on the top well you know sure we're going to talk about the the great things that happen but the more recent history is the one that sticks out in our minds so that's curious i think that this whole thing with the contracts ending for uh glaive magus dupree and zipex is, is quite interesting as well because um we know that glaive's expecting a kid right we know that we know that he's got a kid on the way we, dupree's starting to become one of the older boys he's up to 28 years of age zipex uh is his his head's you know been on a discussion point for a long time um like I mentioned Richard and Duncan before on their last by the numbers episode, they were talking about some murmurs of, of roster changes in Australis. And I've been hearing um, some similar things, especially around uh, names like config, you know, lots of people mm -hmm. shopping around for, for a name like config at the moment right now. Um, so I, I think like this Australis roster, if you look at it, if you were going to keep a couple of pieces, right. You'd be looking for like a Magus, you know, or he could be your in-game leader. He already did it when Glaive was, was out. If Glaive wants to go on, on, bloody maternity leave or whatever when he has a kid coming i know that's a very danish thing to do in this article they talk about hunden now this is the other implications of this this is the bit that i that i didn't i didn't bring up just yet is is the fact that they have hunden on top of the list of potential coaches to take over at astralis now is he traveling with this heroic team to cologne has anybody seen I'm him on social media and stuff guessing he would I'm i didn't see him would. i didn't see him on the picture to be pictures to be honest me either so yeah, it's uh could be that he isn't there. I'm I'm presuming that he would be. We're we're hearing that he is. Maybe who knows? Okay, well, I did not. <laughs> uh, but look at the source. He is. But, yeah, he follows up with. He should be. He like, should okay. be. Yeah, we I know mean, he should I mean, be. But we don't know if he actually. Thank is. you for that information. Uh, I mean, I just uh, heard, heard that now. he should have been there. Like he talked about going to right. the airport with the team and all that. So he should, like from what I've heard talking to him. He should be there. Okay. Okay. Maybe something changed in, in the last minute. Maybe something related to him going to Australis popped up. I don't know. Who, oh, who, I mean, to be life. fair, 
yeah, to be fair, I don't think this is anything that recent. I think this is kind of something that's been building building up over months. So it's not like I don't think this report is like the most uh I guess sudden thing. Like this this is something that I'm sure that uh that has been kind of building up over months and months and uh and now it's kind of like reaching a, a certain point, right? Mm. So I mean what I'm curious about is that was a reference to the rest of the players and their contracts also ending at the same time. Basically, everybody apart from Boopski should be. So basically, all four players plus the coach, their contracts all end at the end of December. And that could have like massive implications, especially if Zonic says, well, fuck this, like I'm leaving this ship, I'm right? Out, yeah. So if and Device has already done it. So like basically, like a lot of the a lot of the team that has achieved so much together is, has already left and they could just all decide to up and leave and just go build it somewhere else, right? And and with an organization that they maybe agree with a little bit more, so um, like this could have very serious uh, implications on on the organization for sure. It, I think it, uh, yeah, one one thing to add, like if yeah. the players are maybe going going away at the end of the year or maybe even before because you maybe want to sell them and not really wait for the contract to to go up, then you want to sign the new coach now, right? Because he's yeah. going to be the guy to rebuild the Ross. You don't want to sign him three months after all of your players left and like what what is the team now you have to have them now start talking to players figure out the idea you want for the team building the team like you get this guy maybe you can get this guy then that falls apart and that takes time so i think uh if this is going to happen this is probably going to be like kind of imminent like during this summer summer transfer for transfer period I think it. I, look, obviously, this happened with device leaving, but I think it's just such a shame that we never got to see them defend. Right? We never got to yeah. see them go as the as the team that we all knew as the greats to defend. And maybe it would have ended up in a horrible fashion, and they could have bombed out in groups or or whatever. Um, but I I find that still hard to to believe. Um, like if that would like even. I, I think they would have still been very competitive, especially once we get back to land, once it's the fucking goats, right? The Australis are on land in their environment, you know, mm. like knowing it's it's that fucking final crack at it or whatever they were thinking. It's just such a shame that we, we not that we've been robbed of that, but like COVID obviously played a huge role in, um, you know, teams getting burnt out, taking breaks, all that kind of stuff. It just, it's such a shitty way for the story to end because we didn't know the story was going to end. And now it feels like it is. And, and, and that is... That is yeah, a really sad way, you know, it's a sad way for the best, like, because we say it all the time, the best team to ever play Counter-Strike. It's true, right? The, the, there's nobody who have done what they've done. Um, so I think that's a little bit sad. But yeah, should we keep the sad news rolling? We can, we move on from this. We'll jump into um, the, the next piece of, of uh, recent news. I just have one one angle to talk yeah. about. Hunden leaving Heroic with their current lineup that they have. Seems... For me, this seems like the lineup that he was trying to build for like five years or so, not five years, but like two years, almost back to his strict days, you know, just adding one player here, then 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 the move over to Matt Lyons, then someone leaves and whatever. And then he goes back to Heroic as a coach and then brings back like Sush, uh, Refresh. And th this lineup feels like pretty sick. Mm. So I'm just curious about like, why do you think that the Strauss would be like so enticing except for the money? Even though obviously mm. Herrick also has new backing, so it's not like they're the 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 budget or they were like three years ago, two years ago. Just uh, about that, I I personally I agree with you, uh, Prof. I actually even think that for for Hunden, when it comes to Counter Strike, it wouldn't make sense for him to leave this heroic project right now to just go to Astralis and you know shuffle the cards and roll the dice and hope that something else happens. Um, but but from like a national perspective and and like a national scene perspective. When when you have a, a, a household and a name that has dominated for so long and has become the jewelry for so long, it is sometimes really hard for players to resist the appeal of that. Like I know it's something that happened in the French scene a few years back when even when very games at the time of Titan was going down, the name was still something that was enough for people to say, holy sh, you know, I could do it. Yeah. I could go there. But but the thing is, there is then a disconnect between what you are hoping you're going to get and what is actually the situation, because Heroic is doing relatively fantastic. They have a good little squad. They build it together. But then if you're Hunden and then someone knocks at your door and it's like, it's the call that that three years ago, two years ago, a year ago, you would have you would have killed to get. Right. So I think that sometimes takes a lot of nerves and, and to be down to earth to realize that, hold on a second, even though it might be what I've been dreaming for so long, this is actually not a good move to do. Um, but yeah, I, I know it, it can be a factor when you have a household that is so established. 
the thing is, if if I'm Astralis and I, look, someone correct me if I'm wrong here because I don't pay too much attention to their whole business side, but they're like a they're like a publicly floated company, right? Like people yep. who invest in them and all that kind of stuff. So you're going to need to rebuild a strong team. You cannot have mm. a shit team. So if you want to get one of the best talent curators in the region, which is Hunden, there's no doubt about it. I think we've been talking about him for years. They're going to put up big money to do so. If you don't, if Zonic's not going to be there, who else are you going to go to, right? Like the only other way is maybe you get Carrigan on the phone. You say, fucking listen, mate. Leave it's phase. time. It's time. It's, it's yeah, time. Make the move. Like that would be one of the only other names that you'd look towards from the Danish scene, and that's not to discredit all the other great Danish in-game leaders and, and and Danish you know coaches and stuff that we have seen. It's just you need to have something that's going to be a headline. And like Hunden, he was in the headlines for a bad reason, but he's still part of a very strong team from the Danish region. And and I think news from the Dan like Australis can't go anywhere, right? If Australis goes somewhere that's their what do they do as as their business like i i they they the the what are they the golden boys of of denmark right so yeah, yeah it, they're very nationally implanted at least in terms of like marketing and pr and all that that's so very much the target needs to be strong we've lost mm. striker is he gone gone or is he just temporarily the Who webcam else? gone he's i think gone, he's, gone. A, he's applying for the coaching position as well, <laughs> so he just he took the opportunity just that's my he's time like, let's go heroic doesn't have a coach now yeah let's so go let's go, go. kdm <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let, uh, are we good with this? We want to move it on. Wait, yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. all right. Let's jump into the MBK news now. Uh, if you guys missed it, MBK, uh, let me link you. I know Lucas, you're probably trying to sort out the strike thing at the same time, but I'll link. I'll link you this one. We'll keep it going. Um, MBK released some trailer. Right, uh, it was just the other day. Um, he's making the transition away from the Counter Strike, which he has been hugely successful at. If you guys aren't as old as me and and Matthew, we remember him from the Source days. Matthew even was uh you know i don't know maybe a, a big brother to him once upon a time oh, um, so to see nathan matthew going to to valorant is a decision that you can pretty easily understand yes um well i, I haven't really uh, spoken with him so i'm not going to put words in his mouth but i think that when you're nbk you are a born competitor right you've been in the elite of video games for the longest time he's probably the most accomplished French player to ever touch the game in terms of the duration, right? You end up in a situation where objectively, I don't think he had opportunities that were matching his 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 willingness to be competitive in Counter-Strike. And that is a very hard fact to to accept when you're a competitor and you think, I, maybe I, right now I cannot do it. I cannot play in a, a top 10 team or whatever, and this is what I want. So in that scenario, when you have his hunger, when you have his, his skill set, I have no doubt that he could just burst into the Valorant scene and and make a name for himself there. And which is not and this is not a diss at the overall level or whatever. I just think that with the skill set he had, with the toolbox he has, and and what has been the reason of his crazy success over years and years and years of Counter Strike, this has values in any other FPS he decides to like it on, where the playing field is leveled, he's a big name. Valorant is very brand oriented, a lot of PR. If you name something, people will look at you. Uh, I can understand the move. I actually can. And I think it's going to probably uh, propose him towards heights he wouldn't reach anymore in CSGO. And, and, and who am I to judge? If he wants to be competitive, then, then fuck yeah. yeah. I, I actually sort of approve the move. Yeah, this is a weird one, right? Because uh, so many people, when they see this, they immediately, because they, they don't use their noggins, go, ah, Counter-Strike is dying. The game, MPK is <laughs> leaving. And Counter-Strike is dead because MPK is leaving. But when you take into what you just said into account, right, and you understand that this guy already recently ha was in Vitality and they fucking they had to build up from the bottom, how many more times does this guy want to do that, mm -hmm. right? How many times is a player going to sit themselves down, look in the mirror, and go, "Well, guess I've got to train up four other yep. fucking guys again, and we'll go through all these open qualify." That has that that compared to okay. Well, as you mentioned, I'm a big name in Counter Strike. I can go over to Valorant. People are going to see my name. The 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 fucking resume speaks for itself. And as long as I can apply myself, and, and then I'm going to get into a team that is already going to be more competitive than if I was in in CS. It's like it's a no. And and the thing is as well, at some point, if you're MBK and you've done that time and time again, and you keep hitting the brick wall of you getting replaced, like you're going to get a little bit disenchanted with things. Yeah, sure. Whereas when you head over to a new game. 
you're going to have the respect of these new kids, right? Because it's highly unlikely it's going to be MBK and four other Counter-Strike guys. It's going to be MBK and four other guys who probably played Counter-Strike, but mm -hmm. probably also played this, that, and the other. So it's a fresh start. And when you think about Nathan's age, what is he now, 27? 27, so, yeah. Yeah, so he's still got, you know, he's still he's got, got years left in time. his career. Plenty of yeah. time. Life hasn't even begun. Bro. We it's <laughs> yeah. 27, all right? A baby. Got a long, long, long time. So, so this move, like, it, like I think for a lot of people, reflects as a way that they can keep their their narrative going in their head that they think that Counter Strike is dying, and they Which think that not. Valve, yeah, it's it, this is this is my favorite one that these. Anyway, I'm already. I'm, I'm going to save not all not, my not juices. I'll, I'll come save over. I'll juices. come over. If I feel like you're losing it, I'll come over. I'm ready to leave. So. But it like this, it reinforces that for people, right? And and that's that. I know we're going a little bit off topic here for the MBK situation, but. It's it's a move that people need to understand is is one that you know has a lot of benefits for MBK as an individual. So it's like if he wanted to, I'm sure he could. You know, he could go join Double Pony. They could make a couple of changes. Maybe they make a couple of swaps with LDLC, and they make another good French team and make it happen, right? Like he probably he could do that. Does he want to do it again? I'm probably pretty not. sure he's. I'm pretty sure he's gone on record saying that he would never play with a French team again. So there you go. So something he's something along those lines. I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I'm pretty sure he said something very similar to that. Uh, are, are I, I we, mean, yeah. okay. Let me let me just put my uh, my what my I think about it. Right. Obviously, this like you guys have been very positive about what this means for him individually, but I think it is bad news for Counter Strike because of his track record right like obviously people kind of remember him for like clashes within game leaders that's kind of like the biggest narrative that's always been following nbk but at the same time like you can you can hardly argue with this with his results like with every team that he's been in he's gotten some sort of some sort of results that's mad that mattered in counter strike like every team that he's been in has been good mm. of course he left vitality b before they started winning a lot more but still like he, he won some tournaments with them um and then um uh, OG, just before that, obviously, yeah. with uh, just after that with OG, they didn't win tournaments, but he, they were still a top 10-ish team, right? It's not like they were irrelevant, and it's not like he was irrelevant in that team, and he didn't have anything anything to add in that team, not at all. Uh, so obviously, like there's there's results that you cannot argue with, and he has the experience to kind of bring up these guys uh, and help uh, help evolve the team into like the the top tier scene. Maybe he doesn't have what it takes to be like on the best team in the world, but he definitely could hang around with like the top 20, you know? So uh, I think it's still bad news. It's still like a uh, kind of like a unique character that you kind of need uh, for, for like some of these new projects and stuff like that to, uh, to get them through to the next level. So mm. sure. I understand it from his point of view. I agree with you guys, but it's something that uh, it's a person that we're, we're going to miss, I think. Sure. I, 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 I would like to, to pose this to you then in that case, Striker, right? Like what you're talking about here is, is are you talking about like if he was to build the team and like help nurture players or are you talking about if he was to join like a current team now and, and help elevate them? Because the latter... It could be either. Yeah, but the latter, I would have a hard time like yeah, finding no, a home I, for him. Oh, uh, sure. I, yeah, I mean, at this point with, with what it looks didn't like happen. now... That's yeah, why he's here. Tried, it probably right? didn't right. happen, right? So there must, have been, there must have been a period of time where he, he pounded for opportunities considered them and and unfortunately they didn't match i think the question that we have to pose is that his the, the the tolerance that he would have in playing in a team that's in the top 20 to top 30 when as you mentioned you've been nbk you've been at the top four sure. so so long and now someone comes to you and say hey listen we're gonna give it a salary it's gonna be a nice little uh, project you have here but you know top 15 top 20 that's the max whereas on the other side of the road if you cross who knows? I mean, we've seen plenty of people who had fallen out of grace in Counter Strike now ruling the world over there. So I, I get what you mean, but I think if we are trying to be uh, empathetic and do a little bit in and be sure. in his eyes, then it, it, yeah, it yeah. I mean, so. as a perspective, I totally get yeah, yeah. it. I 100 percent agree with that. I'm just, just saying from my like Counter Strike striker. perspective. Yeah. Or well, everybody at home who's curious, go look at the last Valorant event and go look at the Counter Strike players who you know and the ones who placed well in that event, and then compare MBK. To those players just do that that's all you need I, to do yeah, just well. have a little bit of a look right like you you'll see what we're what we're working with here so um it's going to be curious to see what happens for mbk over there but this is i want to pivot prof and i want to pivot with you right now okay. uh let's let's now look at this kirby situation because Ooh, kirby, my favorite danish player yes indeed <laughs> now kirby retired retired now reading his statement um, I will link it to you, Lucas, just here. I didn't get the impression that it was just retiring from Counter-Strike. I got the impression it was retiring from professional video games. What what impression yeah. did you get? Yeah, yeah, that's definitely my impression. I think that is 
pretty much the case. Like there is no mention of Valorant at all. I don't think that is something that like if he was considering Valorant, he'd definitely write it so people know that he's yes, uh, someone that's uh, yeah, that's he's on the market. So someone can maybe pick him up or maybe he can trial for for someone. Uh I think he's just the motivation just isn't there. Like he's the guy he's a guy that he's 23 still. He's super young. Uh still pretty skilled. Like I don't think even in the last year that like, he was like a trash player or any anyone that needed to leave the game instantly, right? We had players that were playing much worse than him and still are playing competitively. I feel like either they go into the slump, they came back, or they just like play based on their like on their name, name value. They can find a team on that. So for me, it's it's kind of sad. Like jokes aside, we had the, that little hyenas uh, Twitter back and yes, forth. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. But but that doesn't mean like I I like him as a player. I think he did a lot, and it's just uh, unfulfilled potential a lot of it for for KRB uh, and that's that's kind of sad so but if he realizes he can't do that like he doesn't have the drive to do it then you just look for other things and that, that's it like in the past like if you go back to like 1.6 articles or whatever stuff like this was super normal because there wasn't that much money so people when they didn't feel play, like they wanted to play the game they just retire whenever he could be 21 and retire from cs so this is kind of that thing he doesn't want to stick around just for the money and who knows like what offers he could get right now it's kind of questionable but he he could be a pro player without 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 a doubt in in my eyes and this is something that i that i kind of wanted to to touch on was the comparison between mbk moving from CS to Valorant, right, to continue a professional esports career, and from Kyobi retiring from competitive video games and seeming, this is seemingly, stepping away to go pursue something else, right? Like, both of these things are different. Even though we lose both of these players from Counter-Strike, they mean two completely different things. If somebody isn't passionate or driven or, or you know, if they, if they just don't want to do something anymore, right, and I still see, like, this is the thing. I'm slowly falling back into that hole where I read these brain dead comments. And I think that these people are like, actually, that's their actual opinion. And for a lot of them, it probably is. And that's where I start to worry about society and the direction we're going and, and, and how social media is ruining children's brains. Um, but then I remind myself that these people, for most part, don't actually know what they're talking about. And then I wakes myself up so I can look at this and I can go, this isn't Counter-Strike dying again, because this is what people want to continue to signal. Because Kirby is deciding that he doesn't want to play a video game profession anymore and wants to pursue other things in life. That doesn't mean that the video game is dying. Or not even the video game, because the video game can't die. Uh, the competitive scene, right? We need to make sure that's a clear distinction. This is, this is Kirby coming out and saying that he doesn't have the drive to do it anymore. And I don't know why anybody would want somebody who doesn't want to be here to stick around. Like, mm. right? not only for him, right, as an individual, but for all the other thousands of players who want to be professional Counter Strike players, wait, what? Yeah. What? To be, what? To be fair, also that there's a there's when you were talking about him just like leaving gaming altogether, like there's references to to him potentially coming back. Like there's a there's this line: future work can be both inside and outside the game. So it's not it's not like he's ruling out a, a return, maybe not to playing, but it could be some other role, right? So it's not like he's he's one hundred percent for sure gone. You know, like we'll see in the future. Maybe he gets a. Uh, some opportunity to do something mm. else in the game, right? So, um, yeah, it's possible that he'll stay. I actually wouldn't be. I actually wouldn't be surprised to to see him come back, um, even in Counter Strike, professionally uh, speaking, in a in a while. Because I think what is a little bit hard in that situation, and and, and I agree with you, Chad. It's completely different from NBK. Is that this seems to be emotionally quite loaded, as in you know what, I everything went to shit. And I'm sad, and I need to take deep, deep, deep breath, and I'm leaving. And I think that's that's what, and that's why I echo Prof's opinion a little bit is that you look at Kirby, and and not that he didn't accomplish anything, because obviously that is wrong. Major MVP, uh, he he left his mark already, but you cannot not think about what could have been. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that's the same for him. And I think that's the sense that I'm getting from this is 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 probably someone that is a little bit overwhelmed with where life has gone. When it comes to Counter Strike, and and cannot not think about the fact that things that could have been completely different, and and when you feel like you're one step behind the music, maybe you just you just take a deep breath, you step out, you step out for as long as you need. Um, I think that that's the sense I'm getting from Kirby. More not not really an 
and at peace living. But also, I, I might just be talking out of my ass right here. This is just me feeling from, from, from the statement. I could be completely wrong. But more like, you know what? I, I, I need deep breath. And that, I, I don't think we're never going to see QB again. I just think that right now he, he was feeling like he was going from, from one boat that was sinking to another, to another, to another, and, and just having to, you know, stop that cycle. Yeah. The, the thing for me, he already took a break, though. Right, like he already took that that break, right? Like then then he joined Phase, so it's like he already had some time away. Oh, well, that um, that didn't really work out well. Of no, course, but because I, it was Phase. So. The thing is, as soon as he as soon as for Kirby, unfortunately, the optics are all ruined in the sense that as soon as he mm. left Astralis and said, "I want to be a star of another team," and goes to North, and then North is just dog shit. Mm. But he was right? a star, so no. But like, you know what I you know what up. I mean, right? Like, I know, but but that's the, that's a narrative that's being said. But he did what he wanted to do right but the, the fact that the team didn't accomplish the other part of that equation that that's a different part of the story the juxtaposition dude of where he was and then leaving and then that team skyrocketing to become the best thing since fucking sliced bread and his little project just simmering along right mm. mentally for somebody who's so young as he is i yes. can't imagine how damaging that must have been right because he took a leap of faith on himself and like it didn't work out the way that he foresaw it and that I wouldn't even put it on his own doing, right? Like, it's still it, a pretty it, baller move when you oh, think about it. Like, for sure, it's actually kind of legendary. I have to say. It, look, I, I think, I think that that for Kyobi right now, like, the, this is the thing as well. And you mentioned it, Prof, before about in one point six. This happened all the time, right? Players would get to a point where in one point six, because the way that you were making money was either small, little, tiny contracts. And if you were the Polish guys who went by a million different names um, for the Golden Five, you would probably find yourself either not getting paid or looking for a new organization every six months. So the only way that you were really making money was to win the events, right? Mm. That's the way it used to be incentivized in Counter-Strike. And once you hit a certain point, and Matthew, you remember this, is real life values took over. If you couldn't study and play at the sure. same time, you studied. If you couldn't work and play at the same time you worked if you wanted to have that wife with the kid and the white picket fence you went in that direction there was no being a professional counter-strike player and having something else that's not how it works very few of us and you're one of them that's you and carrigan's another and i can list a couple names still managed to get a degree and play counter-strike to a high level it, it, it was a, it was very normal to see people retire and this is another thing that i want to make very clear for everybody at home every pro guy who makes it in professional counter-strike will not be a professional Counter-Strike player until they die. Because a lot of you seem to think that is how this goes. That once you're a professional Counter-Strike player, you just stay there. You don't, right? You have to, first of all, make sure that you're winning to stay there. And then you keep doing it for as long as you can. This is a short career, right? This is not a long career. The, the fact that this game has been out for almost nine years, CSGO has been out for almost nine years, is insane to think about a professional video game being around and some players who are still playing now are still have been professionals this entire time. That is a long career in professional video gaming. Let me tell you. Like I mean in any sport almost. Like yeah. aside from like the biggest like football and, and these things, like you can be a prof professional, whatever, athlete, running, jumping, whatever, you know, stuff. You don't do that until 46. So it's mm. I, uh, well, yeah, obviously the physical elements for us is more about reactions, right? And if you're able to keep up with the grind of like the hours necessary to to keep yourself up to date on all the little fucking geeky things. But yeah, I, I just wanted, I know that Kirby's young, um, but I, I just wanted to point that out is because we are going to see a lot of players retire, right? Edward, Zeus, like those are names that come to mind. Like obviously Pasha's still streaming. Um, but you think about, there's a lot of names, guys. Like we could go through the list of just names and you would just, you would be like, oh yeah, whatever happened to that guy? Um, all right, I'm dragging on a bit here. Does anyone else have anything on the Kirby or retiring of players or anything like no. that they want to jump into? No. All right. Uh, all right. Next one along the list is uh, the Hyenas, which was Kirby's team. Uh, they're disbanding. Yeah. So not much to say there. Honestly, like not much to say on most of these topics until we go back to the, like CIS and RMR stuff. I think. All right. Well, we can wrap this one up quickly. So the players now who'll be on the market, and I think AZ made a tweet that he was still looking for a team. Is AZ Gade, Borup, and Fessel? Um, so Fessler apparently was one of these guys who was, was a bit of a talent. I don't know if that ever manifested, yeah. um, but that's the players who are free now. And with uh, these murmurs, there's, around, yeah, oh, yeah, there's a, there are actually like rumors about uh, Fnatic is a team that is in, in shits right now. Mm -hmm. We saw that like Golden hasn't been playing in, in a month to like on Reddit posts, whatever. Yeah. Yep. So uh, there are some rumors about them just like shopping around for whoever. 
and uh, I guess Danish people are also on the list, just following NIP's uh, NIP's example. But obviously not not probably getting a device. But maybe someone someone from this team could be on the an option for them. Sure. Okay, that'll be interesting to keep our eyes out for. Uh, just assume... one thing. One thing to uh, to clarify: Barb, I think, is still contracted to Heroic, so okay. uh, he's not actually free. All right. Well, forget I said Barb, everybody. Uh, he's still floating around in the breeze. Maybe he's still getting a paycheck. That'll be nice for him. He doesn't have to worry about that for a little while. Um, I okay. mean, I would hope so if he's still contracted and can't actually leave. <laughs> that would be otherwise, that would be otherwise. slave slave labor, <laughs> wouldn't it? Or something along those lines. Um, all right. This one here. This next one. Uh, very close to Striker's heart. Um, sinners have qualified for ESL Pro League season 14. Striker, how do you feel? Yeah, it's pretty nice because they that's kind of like the the step that they've always been missing to kind of like reach the next level. They've never really taken part in any of these bigger tournaments. So for them to actually make it there, that's I mean, that's really good news for for the team, right? Because they've just been kind of like grinding at the lower tier tournaments. They've done well, but haven't really won won much. They've always kind of like um gotten a lot of wins and then just kind of like faltered, faltered at the end. Maybe they took like one win out of like five five smaller tournaments, but just never really got the big hit, right? And this could kind of like be the uh, the next step for them. So I'm I'm happy. Yeah, and I, I think this one right here uh, with Oscar, right, is 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 the one that we we need to talk about the most, right? Oscar, obviously of Mouse Sports fame, uh, then has had to go through and 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 grind it up with the national team to get himself back into mm. to the big leagues, right? This right here, Matthew, do you think this is the way that these guys have to do it? Because we've got a bunch of names like this who are still floating around. Do you think this is the way to go? Or do you think, you know, there's a time limit on waiting uh, for a big offer? Or what, do you, what do you think? I think that on short term, this is mutually beneficial for okay. both parts, right? So you have, it's actually funny because the anecdote is that a year and a half ago, I worked an event in Switzerland as unique analyst. It was a small little LAN event organized and sinners were here without Oscar. So I met them like a year and a half ago. They destroyed everyone. Uh, but but anyway, the point I was going to make is that it's, it's a case where for Oscar, he gets a platform to broadcast his talent. Mm. The younger players get someone very experienced and very efficient, very strong at the level and they can rise together. Now, do they do they already like had a blood pack to always stay forever for the next five years? Probably not. Probably not. We see where where times takes them. Uh, if they perform very well, maybe they stick together. That's that's the fairy tale we all want to see in Counter Strike, but we know that is very rarely the case. So I, I would look at it in a very pragmatic, short term view. I think it's amazing that they are getting you know better and better, improving, getting taking names. Uh, Oscar is destroying everyone. His stats are always ridiculous. I always hated to play against him um he was one of the most freaking audacious annoying little prick with the awp he always was and and he's still good apparently um now for him if you think that would be a stepping stone back into the high level i think the journey is quite long to mm. regain you know the, the the stock on the market that you can still do it at the top but if there ever was a way to do it then that would probably be this way forcing people to take a look at you and say, hold on a minute, this this guy is he still plays really good Counter Strike. Maybe we should, you know, we should give him a chance. So you're mutually beneficial. Yeah, uh, yeah, go pro. I, yeah, I also wanted to say Oscar only now turned thirty, so he is like Very people. May, yeah, he's still young, still young. <laughs> uh, but there's also like an an overlooked guy on this team is a Neofrag, uh, twenty years old. 119 rating in 2021 so that's exactly the same rating as oscar who is an opper and we all all know op it's, abusers. Yeah, okay, man. Op abu op abusers. <laughs> so this kid is uh, like there is something here like these stats are not they play a shit shit ton of matches uh against top 30 teams 112 rating so if, even if we filter down to the to kind of the the better teams uh, he's still doing quite quite well so he's someone to keep an eye out on on for for the future okay um i uh, yeah i was gonna say something but i forgot so it, it's, it's not really important i guess oh i was gonna bring up the the team list lucas let's do this one and then we'll get into our new little segment just so people can see just to add this a bit more contextually what it means and uh, it's like oh yeah they qualified for esl pro league season 14 what does that mean who's there right so we've got navi g2 nrp mouse sports astralis vitality liquid complexity and tropic eg ents who have actually i think they've been doing better now that hades is there instead of yeah. alu right yeah uh, Sinners, Fnatic, uh, FaZe, Team One, Renegades, and uh, the Bad News Bears, uh, plus a bunch of other teams by world ranking. So with that in mind, uh, you could almost bank on the fact that your Gambits, your Heroics are going to be qualified by the world ranking. So should be um, 
a bit of a studded event. And uh, just to remind everybody, the dates were shifted. Uh, this one kicks off uh, straight after the player break. And hopefully it's on land because apparently that's the shift that we're going back to now. Oh. So, yeah, I just wanted to to, to jump into that one for everybody. Um, and now we can go into our new segment. And I don't know if you guys all have this in your native countries, but we had it in Australia. And the host... No, that, this has ours... nothing to do with whatever you're talking about. <laughs> Uh, absolutely. Uh, well, abs we can't get done for copyright. Of, uh, of, uh, what are you guys talking absolutely about? Absolutely no relation to any Good other job, show. Bro. This Good is like job, completely bro. made up by <laughs> he's, an external he's, he's agency that we paid a lot of money <laughs> to come up with this idea. So Who wants to be a skinnionaire? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what your tunes can't were. Can't do that. I don't think you can do I, that. I was going to actually play the actual There we go. One. That's it. You're not sued. But let me explain this concept to everybody at home. One of the it's, shows... It's still being developed, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Originally, when I was... Uh, I came up with some ludicrous concept that had like fucking lifelines and all this kind of shit going on. But um, to explain this version to everybody, uh, basically, uh, one of the sponsors of the show, Bitskins, has uh, you know given us some skins, I believe, uh, to do a bit of a, it's like a giveaway for our viewers. So what happens is our guest, who this time around is Maniac, will be answering some quiz questions. And every single one of these quiz questions he gets right takes us up a tier of skins. Now, the tier of skins that Lucas has sent my way uh, is the first set of skins is worth, what is it, 50 cents? And then we've got uh, after that two dollars fifty, seven fifty, fifteen dollars, and then fifty dollars skin is the high. So if Maniac gets them all right, somebody in the chat will win a fifty dollars skin. If I'm not, so sorry for the community right exactly. now. I'm already so sorry. <laughs> I was ambushed. Woke up at this three a.m. Kind of but I'm gonna do my you, very though. best for you guys at home. I'm gonna really use the twenty-five neurons I have left. I'm gonna and you only have one them. minute for all five questions. So one oh. minute for all five. Okay, yes. I didn't know so, that. All right. I think the zero point five dollars is pretty cool, though. So, you know, is it? <laughs> I, I well, thought Lucas it was has done like a, a minute per I question. I thought it was a minute so... per question. Yeah, Wait. I was told a minute per question. So I was, I, I was I mean, really ambushed. Chat on that can't one. even read the questions fast <laughs> enough for that. There well, we I go. can try. All right, Lucas, uh, I've got the I've got the link open. Tell me when we when we're playing, and then I can start reading. Yeah. I, I have, mean, I have I'm ready when you guys too. are. Are you ready, Matthew? Uh, I think so. I have a page open right now. Right. There's no question whatsoever, but I'm ready. I guess. Let's play. Who wants to mm. be a skinnionaire? All right. Uh, question one: Two French teams want to see us go major. LDLC and who? A okay. very games. B NV C click? Titan. Yeah, click. I clicked. Yes, I lock it in. We have envious. Are, are you sure? I am sure. All right. Uh, Potentially, well, this is wrong because at the time they were known as envious and not NV. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, just, you just mute him for a second. So we, can, <laughs> we have thirty nine seconds. Uh, is that correct, Lucas? What what happens now? Next question. Let's it's go. Green. It's green. Okay. So I mean, it's green. Next question. He gets it right. All right. We've secured a five cent skin. Second question. Question two. Who won ESL one Cologne twenty nineteen? The last one on land. Liquid, Navi, or Astralis? I know that one. I think I know that one. That was Liquid when they were winning all these events in like sixty four days, wasn't it? I think you're bang on there. I clicked on it. Boom! Community. I I'm got gonna you. have to. I'm gonna watch like the actual who wants to be a millionaire stuff to it, so I can get the the cadence down for this question number yeah, three. Sorry, I'm answering way too fast. Uh, no. Where did Astralis place at their last event? IEM Summer was it A seventh to eighth, B ninth to twelfth, or C thirteenth to sixteenth? Um, IEM Summer. I. Don't look at the chat. No, 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 I'm not looking <laughs> at the chat. All, actually, all no, 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 I'm actually not, I'm not even looking. I have it right open. I'm just thinking because I kind of work the event, so I feel like I should maybe know the answer. Uh, no, it's any between 7, 8, or 9, 9, 12. Did they actually make it past the group just to then lose the game? That'd be that. What games did they play? I have 22 seconds. They lose against. I don't, I, I would have to Google it. Yeah, no, no would, too. <laughs> um, uh, I'm gonna it's take such a easy, but talk. I'm gonna t I'm gonna take. say I'm gonna talk. be oh, seven, positive. I say six. seven eight. Yeah, I take that. Eight eight here, pick. ladies and yeah. gentlemen. Let's reveal the answer. I took a risk. Oh, oh no, that was the doubt I had. Oh, all right, all right. That was the doubt I had between you seven can, eight and nine twelve. It can be salvaged. You can still get the oh, fifteen dollar oh, skin. Okay, we okay, can, can still get the fifteen dollar skin. Okay, let's just. All right, question number four. And get. What is the highest ranked? Academy team at the moment. Oh shit! Is it Spirit oh, Academy? My. Is it Mao's NXT or is it Young Ninjas? Highest ranked academy team right now. I would 
be very surprised if it was Miles NXT, seeing that the team. Right? It didn't beat the uh, Entropic. I know, I know, I know. They're coming into play. Uh, but did that get into the rankings? I that, I'm not sure exactly. I, I have a question about you know the protocols and and uh, how these points were counted or not. I know uh, that Patsy j just from Spirit Academy just graduated high school. That. That kind of counts, also I guess. Relevant, also relevant for his uh, ranking on HLTV. Yeah, you, take you know that what? I actually I kind of like that information from Chad. I think it makes a lot of sense. Uh, <laughs> Do you have anything on uh, Young Ninjas? Who's uh, there? I mean, they've been their players have been stolen time and time again by NNP. It was Roll. ZTR and then NNP. So Roll. eight seconds. I've got to pick. I'm going to pick the high school. I, I like oh, the high school boy. He's going with Spirit Academy here, ladies and gentlemen. The reveal. This it's the Young terrible. Ninjas. <laughs> All right. Well, ninjas. the best we could do for you guys, Blaine. Chad, home. Chad, they're throwing <laughs> Chad. <laughs> That one, that one, I can half blame. The Astralis <laughs> one, I take the blame on that one. I should have known. Where's the, where did the last question go? All right, last question. I'm gonna. Question five: For which organization did MBK play the longest in CS:GO? Is it oh, A damn. LDLC, B Envy, or C Vitality? This is also maybe this, wrong this, because of Envious. According this to got to be this got to be LDLC or Envy. I'd be very surprised if there was Vitality. Uh Sana in chat. Uh, <laughs> He's disappointed. Well, dear, Stan has made this podcast possible here. I guess it's, it's kind of be between LDS and Envy, but but which one? How long was Envious? From they they what in June twenty when we did ASBC Montreal, they were already in Envious at Gfinity in twenty fifteen. They were already Envious because Astro uh, was there. It could it could be Envy. It could be Envy. I actually cannot remember when the LDLC thing. Uh, when they went from LDRC to NVS. Eight seconds. So uh, I hope that you guys like the Galil because uh, <laughs> I'm going for I'm going for NVS because I'm actually not sure if I don't. Oh, it's LDRC. No, All I right. had a doubt. No, it's wrong. No, yep. this is definitely not not correct. Oh. It's definitely not correct. NV. It is NV. Okay. It is NV. Well, it's the shotgun. The Hyper B shotgun is the third tier. The 750. 750. Lucas. All right. We've moved it up to the 750 mark. So that was that was the the bit skins presents who wants to be a skinnionaire and I think it's got it's a fun concept. Oh, all right. I feel I'm that we've happy. stressed Matthew out here. I am yeah. very stressed. This has LDLC been, wasn't played, even that long. I have played major uh, you know <laughs> playoffs uh, and I don't think I was that 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 scared honestly. I was so scared that I would disappoint the community. Uh, but yeah, the Astralis one. Dang it. That one oh. that one hurts. Now, Lucas, do you want to talk about the particulars for the viewers here? Who wins? How do we select a winner? What what are the details? Uh, we already found him. His name we is. We already found a winner. Sorath. Yeah. You want to post it in chat so I can. I did. You, know... did. you did. Yeah. Oh, you did. I told no. Oh, where did where? There you go. Oh. This guy. Congratulations. Congratulations, so, I'm very well, happy okay. you won. Lucas will, or someone will contact could have been, you. And, could have uh, been a USB kill confirmed. If but it weren't for Chad. But yeah. yeah, of course. Sorry. Yeah, look, I was sandbagging. Um, all right. Well, that was fun. That's it. We'll do that more. We'll, we'll yeah. do that on a weekly thing um, with, with our guests. And we'll come up with more fun questions like that. And maybe we'll get to a point with lifelines at some point where you can like call a teammate. Right? We, that might be. Yeah. Yes, cards. that would be nice. I would love. I would have loved to have a call a friend. Yeah. yeah, we, yeah. Call we'll get Apex. one of those in there. Yeah. Call Apex, Dan. Dan, <laughs> I need you. Right be easy. I mean, you could. Well, you could also easily do like audience stuff because we just have like ABC, ABC, you know, and like people could just mm. uh, vote in chat. So it's possible. I would get trolled. We would get production quality, man. We could do the one where we get rid of like a, a question, right? You know, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, 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 that's the one. All right. Yeah. Um. Okay. Totally Great. new concept. We would never seen it before. We, anyway. we would never play. Uh, this is our external agency that is uh, in charge of this. <laughs> of course, we'll probably do some uh, cool stuff. Yes. Uh, all right, uh, Lucas, we need to run some ads now, right? He gone. All right, let's run some ads and we'll be right back. The Extrify M42 RGB, what a fun mouse with five colorways, lightweight frame and just 59 grams with a swappable backplate to suit your grip style, the sensor, the easy cord, the smooth skates and driverless control for RGB and DPI is why you should check out the M42 RGB down below. Parry Match, your esports teammate. teammate. Buy and sell your skins now. Easy, fast, and safe. The best skin site. 
credit card deposits and withdrawals, instant cash out methods. Get the best deals. Quick, simple, reliable. Bitskins.com. All right, and we are back from the ads, and we're going to get this one rolling straight away. We have the CIS RMR that is being run by Starladder. It is live right now. Uh, Navi are taking on Gambit in the grand final. Uh, and the second map is looking pretty good for Navi, who are up 15 to 9. Uh, on Dust 2, it's a best of five, but Gambit have a one-map advantage. Uh, Lucas, just bring this link up for everybody so you can just show them what's going on there. Um, <clears throat> Ancient was map number one. Anyway, uh, that's happening at the moment. So put that on a second monitor, but make sure you keep listening to us because we talk a lot of fun stuff. I was going to say shit, but that uh, I was going to, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, where were we? Oh, Virtus Pro. Um, this is what I wanted to show. They are looking like they're in a bit of a rough spot right now. Now we're going to go to our favorite website, Liquipedia. I know how much everybody here is a fan uh bring this one up so we can flashbang everybody at home lucas this one right here and scroll down to the standings um so i'll link it for you guys here as well uh so this is what we're talking about when we're when we're talking about virtus pro potentially being in trouble so you can see here the total points uh obviously if you're unfamiliar with rmr events this is the regional major ranking events which are required to get yourself into the major uh and over there for the cis region they have uh, five slots available right uh, Virtus Pro are currently sitting outside of that. Mm. Uh, we got Navi first, Spirit second, Gambit third, K23 fourth, and Force fifth. Now that might move around a little bit depending on what happens with this Gambit versus Navi game. Um, but yeah, you keep your eyes peeled and, and, and we'll keep this one updated. But uh, looking at Virtus Pro right now, Striker, what's what's going on? You think it's just the, the CIS woes? Yukinda was over there with the team. They were playing together in a, in a boot camp environment for the first time ever. Yeah, I think they. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out figure it out because I haven't watched so um, much of this armor event. But I think they they lost to the. What's the downward PG. trajectory? I, I don't yeah. want to. Yeah, it's just Ted. things haven't been going fantastic. Can I get Can I get fancy as well with with production? If I put the link, can yes. you guys bring it up as well? Because yeah, you, just you're talking about Lucas. VP and you're talking about Yakinder. And today I was doing obviously my due diligence preparing for uh, I am Cologne, and I, I stu uh, stumbled about these stats from the year from Yakinder and the. Uh, Going from red or from green to red was so insane on that event page for 2021. That, and it was actually something that I had thought about, but I didn't know the numbers were actually, you know, I backing, say, yeah. backing up exactly my thought is that Yakinda in beginning of 2021 was an absolute base in VP. And like the, 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 the space he was creating and the situations he was creating as well from from scratch for jame to close rounds it was so amazing i even tweeted like oh oh shit he was the one they needed like now it makes sense mm. and and going from the plus 43 full green to then all in red i don't know what happened and i don't pretend that he's the only reason but that right here you can see something happen in, in at least his efficiency and and just as much as he was part of the reason why they were winning at the beginning of the year he is now part of the reason why they're not winning anymore and I, I don't pretend like I figured that one out, but this is such a huge shift. I don't think I've ever seen that. A player can go from, from being that you know, successful to struggling that much. Uh, I just I just wanted to bring it up because it kind of got me like, what the hell am I looking at? Uh, I, I guess, oh, what the fuck? I don't know. Uh -huh. It just echoed in my room. Am I still audible? Can you guys still hear me? Okay, You're cool. Good. That just was really strange. I don't know what that was. Um, but I guess because he's an entry fragger, right? Or primarily... That it's it's a cruel mistress, right? It's it's definitely yes. something which is hard to to do consistently. And the fact that he was getting away with it in the beginning, like, is it a, is it his moves get figured out? Because that's one of the things with entry fraggers, right? Is they have a bunch of moves, and then once those moves get figured out and and kind of countered, it's it's not going to be not going to be a, a walk in the park, right? Uh, and it doesn't help that he was such a standout player on the team. And I'm not just saying because of the stats and how he performed, but just in the way that it, like the kind of a player he is, how hard, how really hard aggressive he is. So he's always going to stand out when you watch demos, you know, it, like he, you're always going to see him doing shit off the side, you know, alone and kind of like making his own moves. So there's always going to be focus on him. So people will just always take notice of what the Akindar is doing because he's just in your face. Like you're constantly going to see what he's doing. And so I think that's something that can very quickly catch up with you uh, mm -hmm. if, if, if you're that type of a player. And like, you know, it's just like a couple of matches, you just find out that like the moves that you've been doing don't really work. And then you just lose a little bit more confidence, right? And you can't really get back on the horse. Like that's kind of the, uh, like the theme with, uh, with a lot of these players. So yeah, I, I just have a feeling that he kind of like fell into that trap. 
uh, where once you get figured out, then you lose confidence. You just can't really make those moves anymore. And it's just like, I think it's hard to get over that hump. Didn't mm. somebody cite, I remember an interview or something, that one of the players in the team was saying that there were health issues with somebody or, or oh. something along those lines, right? At some point, like, because uh, it's quite clear to see when the team's trajectory started heading downwards, right? It, it's not just a Yakinda problem. Well, obviously they, they affect one another here, but it, it's just strange that we've hit this patch with the team. And and even now just watching them in the server, they not just a Yakinda, they, they, they can look lost at times, which is not how they looked when they were on their rise. They looked like they had a clear direction. Mm -hmm. and now they're, they're starting to look like they're doubting themselves. And I, I don't know. We've had these interesting ebbs and flows with VP, right? The yeah. avant-garde squad, mm -hmm. right? You can go all the way back to 2019 and then they dipped off the face of the planet, right? And then it took them up until you, like they had the whole Adren situation and they had the, then they, they brought your kinder in, Buster stepped out for a little while. You, then things started looking better towards the tail end of last year, and then things were looking good early this year. I I, I don't know. It's it, like two of these events where his ratings are a bit rough are a, a CIS RMRs, right? Mm. And we we know that for whatever reason it seems to play out a bit differently there. But I, I don't know. Like I can't put my finger on. I don't think it's just a Yakinda no problem. No, no. But I, it's it's just it's curious that they have these same patterns. I think. So, uh... Yeah, just about just about like the the play style and, and the issues they've had. I think that in a very very weird way, Yekinder and his performance might have been just hiding deeper issues in in how they were playing Counter Strike. You know, okay. I don't I don't see VP as a team that in the last say year or year and a half has profoundly revamped the way they approach Counter Strike or changed some things or became more unpredictable. You you, you look at VP, the game is starting. You know what you're about to see. There's very little surprise as to what's happening. For a while, it worked, and then it didn't at all. And then you had that moment where Yakinda completely popped off, and he he changed the game. The rest of the team was still doing what they're used to do. Jamie is an excellent closer. You had Kikut and Buster being like the glue, but very high quality glue as well. And Yakinda was destroying everyone at the beginning of the round, and they, they could play the trade and play it slowly. But it's not like they actually profoundly changed their approach. Mm. And and to an extent, I think. Not that they were lying to themselves, that's not the right term, but they might have been smoke screened or gaslighted in the fact that, oh, wait, hold on, actually, this is amazing, this is working. But I don't feel like they actually, you know, you, you look at a team like Gambit who can run down the clock, but then you compare the two play styles, you compare the two rounds, and there are lots of differences in, in like the level of details and the changing of pace and how they're going to keep their opponents guessing. VP don't really have that. The, the play style and the strap is not as polished. But when you have players who individually pop off like Yakinda did, then it's easy to lose sight of that and to think that you figured it out, right? So I don't think that VP have profoundly changed the way they approach the game. It's just that for a while it worked and and now they're looking again with the same demons in the eyes. Yeah, it's going to be weird because we know there has to be one more CIS, CIS RMR, right, boys? It has to be on LAN. That's the situation. So it's meant to be on yeah, yeah, and we're, we're about to get them uh, in, in Cologne, hopefully. So we're going to see if it's any different on LAN for the team. Um, because it's it's weird with priorities right now, right? The majors not until November. Every everybody obviously wants to qualify for it, but there's other events that are happening all the time. So um, th there's a lot of factors around this. Does anybody have anything else they want to chime in with with the VP stuff? I, I, I have a pivot. If not, no. Just in terms of the implications, unless that's where you wanted to do, wanted to take it. I think there's six now out of the five spots that go to CS teams, right? So they they're kind of in a position where they have to do well at the next one, and they kind of they also kind of need the two teams above them not to do very well, right? So, either uh, because other, other, otherwise they'll just stay below them so that's yeah. kind of like the position that they're in right now they just, they are they just have to play well at the last one they just have to get like a top three or something and make sure that's um that they can actually pull through it's still attainable right i think what, yeah it's, it's, it's a thousand it's, uh, point difference yeah between i mean they're them not and yeah I mean, they're not out of the run out of the running in uh, uh in any capacity but it's just like a difficult situation still for sure okay uh, well, I wanted to talk a bit about Akuma. We don't have them on our list, but we, we need to talk about them. They were a very hot topic. Now, Lucas, I'm going to link two things. Now, I want to be very careful about the way I do this because uh, I, I made a tweet while they were playing and I said it wasn't looking very good. And people like immediately jumping on like the, the obviously GDG bandwagon, which is which is the thing that has been a, a, around them right now. Lucas, what I just linked you, the first link, I'll put in the chat for uh, you guys as well. This is just their results at the Epic League CIS Arma, right? This is the one where they have been accused by high-profile figures in the CIS community 
of using some form of assistance, right? Whether that be a radar thing, whether that be in the Go TV, whatever. But the results here, they lost to Gambit. Uh, they beat Grand, they beat One Win, they beat K23, they beat Navi, they beat VP, they lost to Gambit, and then they lost to VP uh, in a later match. Obviously, um, there was a lot of discussion around this team, around how around how this event was played, um, and and we spoke about it on uh, last week's show with Nafani whenever we did that one, and and I made a comment that they were fucked either way. Right, because uh, like if they came out and they had good results, right, people are still uh, would still be you know calling them cheats. No matter what was there, they were still gonna be finding themselves under that. But that's why when I was watching their first game and they it wasn't starting great, I was like, oh no, this is just for their confidence as individuals. Like, I'm, let's live in a world where they weren't cheating, right? Let's live it. Let's everybody just take yourself to that place. Just trend. Yeah, okay, we're there. Now in that place, they've been accused of cheating, right? So the the eyes are on them. There's all this focus on them, and then they start playing their first game. Let me link you the other one here, Lucas. This is their results from the Star Letter RMR event. They started out really, really rough, right? And then when they moved into map number two, uh, which was on Inferno, things were much more competitive, right? Like it was much more of a competitive affair. And I was like, okay, well, they like I think Sensei was like smashing with the orb entries, like he was being really good at finding opening kills and shit on that Inferno game. Uh, and then I was watching a bit of their Gambit game on Vertigo. I was like, they got 10 rounds against Gambit on Vertigo, right? We know that these restrictions have been amped up, right? There's a, you've seen it. There's, a, there's cameras watching the players over their shoulder. So any of that nefarious activity that these guys are being accused of wasn't there. And they were still taking fours to an overtime game. They were taking 10 rounds off of Gambit on one of their strongest maps of Vertigo, right? When they were getting accused of cheating... Right. The, the accusation is that the only reason that they were, you know, in these games at all was because they were using assistance. This right here, let's assume that they were cheating, shows that at least like their players had a certain level of skill. Right. Is that that's a fair thing to say? Yeah. Yeah. So like like this is because the fallout is where I want to get to from this. Right. So th th this happened. They had a shocker of an event. And apparently, mm -hmm. according to VK posts, um, two of the players said that they're looking for a new team, right? That's before they even played the Namiga game. It was rumored they weren't yeah. even going to play the Namiga game. So, like, th this team has kind of been, I don't know if they cheated or if they didn't cheat. I don't know. Nobody knows, right? Nobody knows for certain other than the players, right? I don't, and if somebody else does know for certain, then maybe we'll find out now that the team is potentially not existing anymore. But what do we make of this whole mess, right? Because there's obviously a mob mentality online. We've been here many times before. But what the results these guys had compared to the other event, it's night and day. Do we just put that down to other teams not researching it? Do we, do we, like, I don't, I, I don't know. Like, it's such a weird situation to find ourselves in. I think it's impossible to, like, judge it in, in any, like, reasonable way because of these things that you, that you said. Like, it doesn't matter if they cheated or didn't cheat. The things that happened around them would influence them going into the second, second event. And everyone else would be more prepared for them knowing like how they play, yeah, and that they're and that they pot potentially cheated before. So everyone wants to destroy their asses, uh, especially these teams that uh, that were in their group. Uh, some of them even publicly said that they think uh, they cheat, like Navi, Navi players, coach. So yeah, it's it's just one of those things where you can't really take away like ha all of the context and just j judge it. But at the end of the day, they kind of got smashed. They didn't really do. Almost they won one map against Namiga. Uh, overall, didn't look. They looked like the team that we thought they were before the last CSR, CIS RMR. So, yeah. if if they cheated and everything that happened from it is like they got to play another CIS RMR and now they got destroyed and they don't get to play another one, be it. Let's let's just say like that's that's uh, not as bad of an outcome as it uh, could have been overall. So uh whatever we move on and and that's it but uh if they didn't it's just it's pretty unfortunate but maybe they still get another chance in like some other combination of players or another team or some shit like that just the way the cookie crumbles i think yeah. that's the way that the uh the saying goes does anybody have anything they want to say about about akuma no no mm, my oh. opinion would be of very little value when I don't know anything about a subject, I tend to just stay silent. Yeah, it's it's so it's it's such a weird one, right? And and thank God we're hopefully getting back to land so we can have that doubt removed, mm -hmm. right? That that's that's hopefully the direction we're going. Now, uh, Navi versus Gambit. I touched on it before. They're playing uh, right now. Ooh. 
So they're going into map number three of the series. Uh, I guess technically map number four because Gambit had that one map advantage. Prof, I saw you made a tweet the other day about how many times these guys have played this year. It's something ridiculous, huh? It was eight times already. So about nine the, now. That was nine, and this is the tenth one that they're actually playing oh, right shit. now, I think. Okay. Yeah, so... And this is the second best of five. Others are best of threes, right? I think I think I'm correct on that. Yeah, Maybe plus right. plus minus one. Uh, so yeah, that's a lot of uh, a lot of Navi again. But then, especially I think in the last two weeks they played. Now this is the fifth time, uh, which is not not maybe two or maybe three weeks. The the last event that they played, I am summer. All right. So no, uh, uh, Navi was another I am summer. Were they? What was it? Was it, it a blast? Uh, it was blast. Yeah. Yeah. They played yeah, blast, 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 blast. Yeah. yeah. So they played each other quite a lot, and that kind of sucks because of all of this. I mean, just talking about the whole oversaturation thing, I think people often say like, oh, no one wants to watch the same teams play each other every week. But that really doesn't happen that often in general. Like there are some teams that like the Vitality and IP uh, last year situation, they played each other too much. But overall, most teams don't play each other that often unless they're the two best teams and then they go to the final and we have like Astralis Liquid and mm. that, that kind of a thing. Uh, but this is a situation where two teams that are pretty good and we want to see them play are just playing each other too much. Like this is this is becoming ridiculous. Like I don't really want to see them play like three times in, in a week. It's, it's I, uh, okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm going to slightly disagree on that one. No, not, not that it's not uh, exaggerated how many times they've played, right? But I feel like that matchup is so unique in how both teams influenced each other on short term that it became it became like a book with a thriller. And I don't know who's the who's the culprit. And I want to turn the pages and just see more and more and more and more, right? Because the story just kept on evolving after each series. And I thought that was so fascinating. And and if it came to a point where it's stalling and we don't get that same mystery effect about the game, I would probably meet you there. And I'm not saying that they haven't played too much, but it was so nice uh, to see Gambit, you know, evolve in that matchup and stop being the scared little brother. And I'm going to go ahead and say that Gambit is probably the best thing that ever happened to Navi as being yeah. now their challengers and forcing them to become better. And, and I see Navi become better now that they are losing to Gambit, which is a very paradoxical thing to say. But I think these two teams now mutually influence each other to become better. And I think that's amazing to see because they play against each other and then a team figures something out and then another team becomes better and then there's a map pool change and then the veto becomes different. And it's like, okay, nine times in, in, in whatever, four or five, like, that's a bit too much. I can, I can turn you on that. But just because there were so many great stories and it was an ever-evolving microcosm between these two, you can sign me up for three or four more. I'm, I'm ready for that. Yeah, I, I think that it it has definitely delivered in terms of the games we've been getting. Like, just look at some of the, the score lines. And this there are is, a lot of close ones. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and this is not surprising in modern day Counter-Strike, right? <laughs> we we seem to get a lot of our games that are, that are very, very tight. But it's good that they're not just stomps or blowouts. And there there's you can see just with the score lines, the evolution that, that Matthew's talking about here, right? The fact that you get Gambit getting the better of Navi early in the year. And then Navi get a chance to strike yeah. back in Drift Hack Masters, and then they they get them in the this the RMR where Navi normally you know are strugglesome, but then Gambit come back out on top in the next couple of events. Like that back and forth, it's it's it looked like it was going to be one way, didn't it? Like it looked like it was going to be just Gambit just fucking getting the better of them time and time again. But now the fact that there's a bit of back and forth, and this is number one and number two in the world. The thing that I really struggle with with like the the critics of of how many times teams play each other and you made the perfect example prof is is liquid astralis right liquid astralis was the two best teams in the world like if nobody can beat them and both teams are going to make it to the grand final that's the game that we're going to get right this here has been compounded because of the amount of matches and ending up in the same groups for example yeah. like what and the got... cis cis rmr as well mm. yeah. just existing and being another one where in europe you only had one here you had two they're in the same group and then double elimination playoff brackets as well so <laughs> it's uh yeah it's, it was bound to happen and and that's the thing if we didn't get gambit versus navi in the final of a lot of these events then they probably wouldn't be ranked number one and number two in the world right now Right, like, yeah, and yeah. they are quite clearly number one and number two in the world right now. So this is another one of the situations, just like the Akuma one. Uh, this is the way the cookie crumbles, right? Like that. That's that's just the scenario that we're getting right here. Um, and I think that if we get this matchup 
on LAN in a week's time, that's going to be fantastic. Um, because right, like this is where you would you you would have to start comparing these rosters and go, okay, well, who actually does have more LAN experience? And you know who who? And then we can start looking at things that aren't just them in this environment they've been playing on. There's a lot of new factors. Um, so those those conversations are going to be exciting and they're going to continue to be had. And um, I I think that until that's the thing. We, we might not get this matchup a whole lot in the future now um, because we only have one more CIS RMR, right? So they're, they're not going to be facing each other every second week because of a scheduling thing anymore. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how this one continues to deliver. Uh, do we have anything else we want to jump in with this or should we get into our Cologne discussion, boys? Let's oh, it's more on. All right. Uh, let's jump into Cologne. Now, this one here is going to be a lengthy topic. We got some stuff to, uh, to, to get through um, and there's lots to cover. Um, I've seen lots of questions. ESL have been putting out a lot of stuff on, on Reddit. They've been doing interviews. Obviously, Carmack did one with uh, you guys at HLTV just the other day. Um, and for those people who are, who are unaware, this is going to be the first LAN event back since IEM Katowice in 2020. That was mm. 492 days ago. Now, we've been through an awful lot in 492 days. Um, we had the coaching scandal. We had this Akuma situation. Uh, we had um, stream sniping. Stream sniping. Yep. Uh, we've had six man rosters. Match fixing or different kinds. Yep. We we've had we've had a lot of things happen, um, and a, a lot of very damaging things happen. Um, but we've also still been able to keep going um, throughout one of the most tumultuous times in in everybody watching right now's history. Right, like for everybody who's involved in this, and what the the, the COVID time is unprecedented, um, and and there's always been a lot of clamoring uh, and comparisons, and and all of this stuff that's been happening throughout of of why aren't we back at LAN yet? Traditional sports are back. Fucking Valorant ran something. League did this, um, and that's just been getting louder and louder the the longer this is has been dragging on. Right, uh, ESL did the classic kick in the can down the road since what was it? uh the global challenge last year from the start pretty much yeah yeah, but the global challenge was like the first time where they 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 were saying that they were you know pretty strongly about it and then we ended up kicking it so this is the first time and it's actually happening um the teams at least the play-in teams have arrived in cologne um and and i guess this is probably where we should we should start with things is to do with with these quarantines and and what's in place now striker and prof i know you guys have been traveling recently matthew i know the same for you you've been having to travel around to different places for, for different jobs and, and and things like that and I, I don't know maybe we could go around the room let's just start with you here striker now i want to preface this before we start talking about any of these things the only person out of the four of us here who has anything close to some form of a degree to know anything medical is matthew but i think he would say that he is not an expert on covid so I'm going to go ahead and say all four of us here are not experts in the topic that we're about to have a discussion on. We're just armed with very limited information, our own experiences, and our own ways that we view this. So do not take this as as is it as advice. Don't take this as anything that you should use. Just understand this is four guys having a conversation about a topic that affects everybody in the world right now, right? Okay, as long as we've got that out of the way, we can do this. Strike it. The world to you right now how does it feel compared to peak COVID compared to before COVID? Like how, how, how is it through your lens at the moment? I mean, considering I was like, the thing is like this trip to Denmark that I had like a week ago has kind of like changed my view because it just like, basically like it's opened me. It was like an entirely normal experience. Like sure. Like I had to travel with a mask and that was it, but that was the only thing that was different from like when I used to travel. Like I only had to have a mask on. They didn't stop me, at least on the way there. They didn't stop me anywhere extra. I crossed the border to Austria. I flew to flew to Denmark, right? Didn't, no hints of any sort of changes whatsoever, right? On the way back, I, I had to have a test done at the airport in Copenhagen to go back to Austria. And that's it. Again, didn't get stopped from Austria to, to the Czech Republic. Obviously, things are a bit different when you're in Schengen and, and stuff like that. Uh, but in general, like I had such a, normal experience traveling that it's like almost almost crazy to me that there's COVID, you know so like that experience has changed my view a little bit but obviously there's still a lot of restrictions going on and with specific countries and stuff like that obviously countries are still dealing with COVID differently some are doing badly this delta variant is going around which is 
uh, again changing things and, and and all of that stuff so obviously it's still serious but it seems like we're getting back to like a more of a normal uh normal setting where people can kind of travel without without too much of a hassle right you don't really have like 14 day quarantines like you used to like a year ago and stuff like that from a like between a lot of places let's say i'm not going to say every like i like i said things are different in every country a little bit uh but still it seems like things are relatively normal now where you maxim at at most you need to have a test on arrival or a, a test before you board the plane or maybe you need to self isolate for a couple of days and that's it not not nothing nothing that you can't do you know within a week of preparation yeah uh, would would you say your experience has been similar to that prof yeah i mean everything feels almost normal uh for me right now uh, almost everything's open wherever you go you can travel uh, especially if you have like the covid passport thing or if you're if you had the, the vaccination or whatever it's super super simple as i just said like literally clubs are opening here in croatia gyms are open for like five months six months already so it's uh kind of normal you just have to have a mask to go into a shop which is annoying because you forget it halfway there and then you're like "Fuck! now i need to go back home go upstairs get the mask go back go back down but but other than that it's uh completely normal almost now th this is the this is the thing uh matthew you're the smartest of the bunch uh i i feel that i i can safely dub that just based off the fact that you can diagnose what's wrong with my brain um <laughs> so I don't think anybody can do that. Yeah, I, that's That'd be that, another that's podcast. A, that's a very good point. It might be one we have to record off air and edit <laughs> out a lot of a lot of trauma. Um, but Matthew, to you, is is it similar to what to what Prof and Striker is saying, or do you think we're in that summer illusion that we had last year? Um, I think I think this is actually the battle that is happening behind the scenes right now, and okay. I think it's really hard to grasp because. As human beings, and I speak for myself, but I'm sure a lot of people relate, you have all this, these pent up feelings about, you know, all the restrictions and the frustrations that you had to go through and maybe the fears that came with it. Uh, I personally was a lot very anxious for some of my loved ones, whatever, you know, all of these feelings we had to go through. Now things are opening up again. Uh, the situation in Switzerland is looking much better. For example, um, I'm echoing Prof sentiment. We are opening, but we know it kind of happened last year. And the question is, it's really hard to plan for what could go worse when things are going better. And this is where we, we are right now. Uh, and as I say, in Switzerland, everything is opening up. But everyone kind of thinks in the back of their mind, okay, with this Delta thingy, we don't know how autumn could look like. So let's take it easy. Let's take a step back. But it's, it's hard to fight against it because you just want to live again. Uh, so in that sense, I kind of find myself in between where... I'm very happy, obviously, that life goes back to a semblance of normalcy. Um, just for an anecdote, during last summer, I drove 16 hours from Switzerland to Denmark to work an event because I couldn't get a flight. So uh, these are some of the things we have to do to make it work. Now things are looking uh, better. You can actually go outside. You can share a meal with people, and, and it's awesome. I just think it's hard to keep in mind that we have to be careful for maybe a little while so that we don't have to go back to the shit period with lockdown and all that shit. That, and that is the hardest part, right? Yeah. You know, delaying the gratification just a bit more to be sure that we don't end up here again. Yeah, and this is the, this is the thing, right? There's a couple of, there's a couple of takeaways. Because I think a lot of people, if you're listening to this and you're watching right now and you're from Europe, then you're probably in a similar boat to what we've just been talking about. If you're from... Australia or Canada or New Zealand, it's much more restrictive for you. Um, if you, you know, in America, I, I don't know what's going on there, but reports were a couple of weeks ago that things were, you know, there was no masks and now they're going back to masks because of this Delta variant. Now, there's no, the Delta thing is obviously no joke because Russia, one of the regions we need to talk about quite a lot right now is being quite heavily affected. Um, and those new cases that are there have basically caused travel from that part of the world to be difficult. The UK, uh, Delta variant as well has kind of locked them out of travel, right? These are things that are all just happening and changing on a weekly basis. Now I'm with you boys in the sentiment that things appear to be getting normal again. Right. And I'm, this is where like, I probably get labeled like a fucking COVID denier or some shit, but I would just wonder like if we can stay in this yo-yo state, right. Even with a new variant or a new, this or a new that or whatever. I wonder if now that Pandora's box has been opened or people are going back to normal life, right. Last year, I still remember having to wear masks this time to go to restaurants. It was probably a month later. But this time, I'm walking around in different countries and cities, and things seem very, very normal. 
right? Very, very normal and almost scarily normal. Like airports, this is what I was joking about with Striker at the front of the show is that people have gone back to being the same level of dickheads they were mm. before the pandemic even existed, right? So we're in the scariest spot for all that to kick off again. But now we have vaccines, whether or not they work, you know, against the Delta variant. This is all conversations that we could have until the cows come home. And as we, as I mentioned only a couple of minutes ago, none of us are experts here. But the biggest thing here is, are these, not loopholes, uh, are these hoops that we're jumping through to deal with all this are constantly changing and they're mm -hmm. different everywhere, right? So this is why ESL with the, this I am Cologne, I keep reading comments on th on threads and, I, and I, I'm sure, like I have to remind myself, I have to keep reminding myself that these people aren't real people. Like I see people asking questions like with an audience question mark and I'm like, what what do you do? Like, what do you, did, did you actually write that? Did you write that question and hit send as a sincere question like are you being a real human being are you living in the world that we're living in right now or are you just being a fucking knob jockey right like right like i have to remind myself of those things but there are genuinely people who who aren't aware right so i have the the thread that esl put up lucas let me link you this one um it's so much stuff uh maybe i'll put it in the chat i'll put it in the chat so you guys can look at it if you want to carmack was answering questions from this and, and basically they're talking um i don't want to say vaguely Right, this is more information than you guys would have had if they didn't do this. But they 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 mentioned that uh, the the entire document on this topic is nearly fifty pages long. We will not be sharing it publicly. We see a possibility in reassessing and potentially adjusting parts of it after the first week of the event, but it's too early to make commitments on that front. Now, with these protocols and stuff that ESL have put in place, right? It's quite clear that the players flying in have had to have a three day quarantine period. Some of them have had windows in their hotel room. Some of them haven't. And this, and I'm not trying to be a dick here. I wouldn't want to stay in a hotel room for three days without a window. But people quarantining in, in Australia when they go home, I'm pretty sure, like 99% sure that they don't have a window for two weeks whenever you go home to Australia. You, you don't get a window. And I'm not saying that's good, right? I'm just mm. saying that that's something that is, is in part of, as far as quarantine going, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a normal thing. Um, but yeah, like the, the, that was one thing that was clear uh, that, that the players uh, have to be quarantined for three days. We heard about the, the Russian CIS situation where they may potentially have to quarantine for the whole two weeks. Um, I think the jury's still out on that. Uh, I, I was talking to some people today and, and, and I will let them do the talking when the time comes. But it doesn't it sounds like maybe that um, isn't 100 percent the case. They, they, they might be fine. It might just be a couple of little details amended and adjusted just there. Um, I'm trying to think what other protocols here that you, when you guys were reading through this, was there anything that stuck out to you or the interview with Carmack, like a, as a protocol or anything in place that you oh, thought? Apparently yeah. you can't leave the hotel even uh, during the tournament. That's a thing. Like you can't really go even after the three day period, you can't just like go out for a dinner in Cologne. Uh, no. if that, yeah. So that, that's like a, uh, just like a semi bubble, let's say, yeah, uh, it's not very like a super hardcore thing. I mean, you can go outside in front of the hotel or whatever, but you shouldn't be leaving the premise of the hotel and going anywhere. And that's for, I don't for know the staff. If I don't know if they're even allowed to go like out the front of the hotel. Maybe they have own. like a, I don't know. I'm 95 and, and Inns just said it in chat and I was talking to some other players. I'm pretty sure they One get hour an hour a day. They get an hour outside a day, and I'm pretty sure that I don't. I, I don't know. Maybe it's chaperoned. I'm not certain. Um, but like this is the thing, right? Um, so I mean, that sounds sounds a bit crazy, right? Like either you go all the way or you don't go at all. I feel like, um, but yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, so in that in that hour a day, they can just go to a, I, I don't know what's open in Germany, right? but I they can just go it's... to a club and just like meet with people and just like that's where you, you can catch it, right? So it's like obviously you kind of have to be like smart yourself if you. If you understand why these precautions are being mm. taken, then you're not going to be stupid and just like in the, go in the middle of hundreds, hundreds of people. But you know, these are players we're talking about, so sometimes they maybe should happen. So yeah, yeah, uh, no. it's just yeah. Seems it, like it, seems like either either you just you just keep them quarantined the entire time, or you just let them do whatever. Yeah, right? I so, think it, it it can be very complicated because there there are two words. There's there's a legal world obviously which which you, you cannot really mess right if if a country is required to do 14 days of quarantine when you arrive then th that is not up to interpretation of course you just you follow the law and that's it when you have leeway that's when it becomes it can become very complicated for both the to and the teams and the players because it is unthinkable to 
to imagine that a person is going to behave in a perfect way for 14 days. The risk zero doesn't exist. Yeah. We're human beings. That doesn't exist. But no one wants to hear it because if, if something happens, you know, I have to say, I'm just going to put it out there, right? Even I consider myself to be very careful and thoughtful and responsible. But when I'm traveling to come here with the studio, I myself am very, very afraid of what if I have a positive test and I would endanger the whole fucking production. Hmm. So when Chad asked me, do you want to go and have ramen? I tell him my PCR test hasn't arrived yet. You know, let's, let's take a deep breath. I, I'm not exactly sure. But, but I still interact with a couple of people in the corridor. I talked to the check-in. I had a taxi taking me. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's many. My point is that even if all the players are behaving in the almost perfect way, which is the only level that humanity can reach because we're not robots, the risk zero doesn't exist. And that is what is so complicated to deal with because you're dealing with, not with absolute, you're dealing with nuances. How much freedom do we give the players? If we give them that much freedom and something happens, how do we look like? If the players don't have any freedom, how do we look like? It's so complicated. It is so complicated. And that is just uh, the whole COVID situation as a whole. If you really want to go through the actual thought process of how many factors you have to take into consideration, you're going to knock your head against the wall because that's what I do. If I try to get a complete grasp of the situation and all the factors, economical risk, health, when I think I just want to bang my head against the wall, I cannot comprehend how much there is so i just go with i hope they do the best because that's that's the most my my spirit can actually do i cannot handle more than that yeah i i think that's that right there is the key right is because a lot of these things and i'm sure the players who are who are in the hotel and stuff are probably like a lot of them are danish you know a lot, uh, uh, some of them are german right uh they know what life is like for them outside of this situation but i think the hardest thing to get past is do we want land to happen or not? And if we want land to happen, then we have to take these extra protocols of yeah. safety. Because Especially for the first one, mm. right? Yeah, because no, first of all, ESL are taking the risk of being the TO to do this. Because let's say dickhead player number 72 does go out, goes to Zulpisha Straza, gets on the fucking piss, comes back, gets COVID, spreads it throughout the hotel. If that happens, the headline is going to read X player gets COVID at IEM Cologne. Not X player is a dickhead who broke the rules and went and jeopardized the entire event for everybody else. That's not what the headline's going to read. The body of the article will read that. But uh, the fact of the matter is the damage is done. And the liability here, we're talking about people's health. So don't think I'm skimming over this. This is obviously something which is very serious. But we're talking about this on the face value. Is that the liability is with ESL. They're the ones who are putting on the event. They're the hosts of this. Right. And some of these kids are kids, you know, like we're, we're talking about uh, teenagers, young adults in a lot of these occasions. Right. And and these things might seem restrictive, especially with what the four of us just said about the way the world seems and probably through your own eyes as well. Um, uh, but I, I can I can understand why you would want to eliminate as much risk as possible if you're ESL. Right. That, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Now, we history will tell how much we can debate this, right? Was it was it too much? Did everything get better? Did it turn out the we, we'll only know after the fact, right? And hindsight's 2020. Um, so we, with what they're putting in place, it's quite clear they're trying to do the best with with limited capacity, right? Like they obviously don't have control over every single little detail. They're putting these things in place. They're hoping that the players are going to subscribe to it and, and and do what they're asked to do. And then we're going to hope that we can put on the best event that, that we can do. We have 24 teams coming from all over the world. This isn't like it's just Europe or just North America. We're talking about people from Brazil. We're talking about people from China. We've got Kaze coming from Malaysia. We've got Australians coming on over, right? We've got people from everywhere coming to, to this event. And uh, I hope it all goes well. Uh, I hope it Look, all. There's uh, there's also one difference between kind of us and like a lot of the sports, right? Which kind of is uh, it's important to make that distinction because for us, pretty much everything that we do happens inside, which is a very big difference compared to like a Formula One, where true. they just had fucking hundred thirty thousand people in the stands in the Austrian Grand Prix, which is just all outside, right? And and for the players, it's kind of or drivers, and that in that case, it's kind of the same thing, right? Like you spend most of the job outside or most of the most of the the, the time competing so for us we're literally like in usually in relatively small rooms right obviously you can kind of go around it and just like go into i don't know in some sort of a different setup where um you don't have to have 
all the teams in one place, and that's kind of what the ESL is doing, obviously. But there's still a big difference there that they just need to take into consideration. It's just like a fact that it spreads more uh, if you're inside it in a, in a closed room, right? So uh, that's why we also need to take a bit more precaution than than a lot of the other sports, for example. Yeah, a lot of people will make the comparisons to Rainbow Six and 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 Valorant right. and everything that they've been able to do um, and what they've been able to pull off. And those are also smaller events in terms of team sizes. Uh, like this is a twenty-four team event. Sure. I am Cologne, and these were like eight team events uh, or something like that, ten teams maybe. So that's also like the scale is much larger and a lot more countries, a lot more players, a lot more shit that can that can go wrong uh and and all of that uh i think the setup here is going to be this is like the the hyatt hotel which is the same place where cologne the group stage for cologne have been 2019 for the last was it two years i think almost even i'm not sure i think, it's I think it was 2018 years. 2019 because yeah. 2018 i lived in cologne and i didn't get to stay in the nicest hotel we'd stayed in uh, so i kind of <laughs> got fucked on that one 2017 <laughs> was definitely the esl studios like up there somewhere near an ikea and in, in the middle uh, of nowhere mmc yeah, and yep. uh, but this is a this is just a classic ballroom. Everything's taken out, and they have the like the backdrops, like small. I don't know, like it's the big boxes. Yeah, right? yeah, like, like some some kind of booth. Not not a booth. It just like separated from uh, from the rest of the things. So people will be able to hear each other, but they won't be like playing next to each other. Uh, it's just gonna be like you're gonna be somewhere in that big ballroom, and the other team is gonna also be somewhere in that big ballroom. And and that's gonna be it. But just just because people will take what you said there and think that's different from normal from group stages on land. What Prof just said is normally how it goes. That's yeah, normally how, how it is. looks. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So the the thing is, I don't know how the playoffs are gonna look. Right. I'm not gonna pretend like I know. If if I did know, I'd say yeah, it's gonna look sick. I don't know. Um. Uh. Another... I don't know that there's gonna there's even gonna be a difference. I feel like it should all be the same setup, right? I doubt that there's gonna and be any changes if in terms of the case, venue. If that is the case, that's gonna be extremely underwhelming. Yeah, I mean, maybe... I don't see how I don't see how it would be any different, honestly. Like, if you want to do this event, like you're gonna have to stay in the same setup the entire time. Oh, yeah, but maybe they do something like they did, with, let's say, the star ladder group stages where right. you, you can see each other, but you're like kind of far away. Sure. Uh, I think I don't know. That would be kind of okay. Would have been yeah. good if ESL built a studio for all the players to play from, wouldn't it? Um, that could have been something cool. Um, <laughs> anyway. Uh, before I don't I... think I don't think anybody uh, nobody got the sarcasm. That. I nobody don't think uh, people that. got the sarcasm in that. Um, but really, because there was a couple of questions, and people are probably like, "Why are Matthew and Chad in Katowice? Um, we're doing the broadcast from Katowice, so um, I, I'm going to let out. I'm going to let a little bit of my frustration leak. We just did, right? We just did, or me, I just broadcast from Cologne for the better part of 18 months. For the better part of 18 months since the pandemic started. The pandemic started, myself, Henry, Machine, Hugo, Harry, and Stunner got trapped in Cologne when Pro League and the the first, uh, what was it, the road to Rio and all that was happening. When you were in that house? like a... Yeah, so just, just to give people the backstory on what happened, we were in hotels, everything got closed down, COVID fucking going bonkers. We're getting kicked out of hotels. Like we're li literally the hotels in Cologne were closing and we're getting kicked out. They weren't saying, hey, I go over here. They were just kicking us out. So some ESL worked miracles and they found us a house, right? Because Airbnb was closed. I don't know how ESL did it. They decked this place out and it turned into this house where the six of us lived for like fucking three months straight, right? But my point is like over this whole COVID period, I've been broadcasting from Cologne exclusively. Nowhere else, just Cologne. And now, <laughs> and now that we are back on land, right? And I have not received an answer from ESL that I think is appropriate. So I, I'm not, I'm not, I can't give you guys one because I don't feel that I have an appropriate answer on why we're broadcasting from Katowice. Um, so you I, got I, one, but but it's shit. So you'll just protect them by not saying what they. I'm not protecting them because I, I I don't feel what they've given me is an answer. So I'll 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 wait until I till I get an answer, and then we'll talk about it in the future. But. I, up until is this there point, a new studio? I mean, there's supposed to be a new studio there or something. I right? haven't been there yet. I don't oh. go there until tomorrow. Um, uh, but I, I don't. I, I guess maybe the technology is better, right? But it's just it just I mean, so, that's, that's <laughs> like that was like a selling point of of Cologne that there's like a different studio and there's like going to be like new shit going on in the in the broadcast. So I imagine 
that's the the main reason that they have some like new new stuff coming in. So. I, I I don't I I genuinely striker. I'm I'm I I I don't know. I I am just a little bit fr- like we wouldn't have been able to be with the players anyway with these restrictions, right? Like we wouldn't have been with them at all. So it wouldn't have changed anything. It's not like Matthew can go up to fucking the French boys' vitality and say hi to him like he normally would. That wouldn't have sure. happened. Eat some and, McDonald's and smoke a cigarette it, between it's, matches. It's just crazy, right? Like I did now? 18 months of broadcast <laughs> from Cologne and now the first LAN is back in in Cologne and now <laughs> I'm in Poland, right? Like I did Katowice this year from Cologne and I'm doing Cologne this year from Katowice, right? Like that for me is just, it just, uh, for me, I'm just like, ah, oh, like that, 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 like, is, I, I don't know. I, I can't work it out. That one right there puts my nose out of joint, if I'm going to be completely honest, right? And, and to everybody normally who's watching I'm an ESL shill. So this is, this is one of the things that has, has frustrated me to be, to let's, be. Let's move on to the event, Ben. All right. We've let's been talk talking about, about COVID <laughs> enough. <laughs> Don't you like talking about COVID strike off? I, I mean, we it, just my we just topic. go over the same shit all the time, right? So yeah, I'm just like tired of the conversation. Are. Like, fuck it. That's what we do. We just talk about all right, we got the next subheading of best part of return to land. Um I mean, isn't it just isn't that like doesn't the I think it's that answer the question? Isn't it? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the removal of doubt for me. It's 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 the fact that everybody has a level playing field. I think that is is the the key takeaways. Um, does anybody have anything different to why they think that, or what they think is the best part for the return to land? Hmm. There's no crowd yet. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm curious to see if, if, if anything is going to play different just because like the speaker's advantage difference and ping and all of these things, like, it, are we going to feel like the, the aim battles are going to be any different that that's what I'm looking to looking to see we've had players in the past talk about like the angles and stuff yeah yeah i mean uh i'm trying to be careful here and i try to remember how it was when we were playing chess that was a while back um i think that when it comes to the pure counter-strike we might overplay a little bit the angle of you know online versus LAN, just because of the amount of games we had bootcamp versus bootcamp and all that i know the internet and the quality of the internet is something that has a huge impact when it comes to counter-strike and i can tell you this because i played many, many years with a trash connection. And now I have like a 10 gigabyte up and down at my place. And when I click, the guy is already pretty much dead. So I know that the internet is a huge thing. Uh, there is an audio component to it. So I don't want to downplay it, but I also don't think we should exaggerate. Like the Counter-Strike is not diametrically dif- different. You can maybe get away with a little bit more on the online. But the most interesting part is to see how emotionally or psychologically teams are going to be differently influenced. And that to me is like, that's what I love about it because for each team, the challenge is going to be different. For each team, the passage from offline to online will have a different flavor. And for us, the same. Um, the only risk and why I invite the community not to do is to believe that whatever the hell is going to happen in these first two weeks will invalidate everything that happened in a year because that would be wrong. Yeah. That would be wrong. Straight up wrong. This is going to be a new challenge, a new set of hoops teams that have to jump through and it is possible that some teams will do a better job at doing it quickly or not but i strongly believe that the teams that play the good counter strike and work hard will at the end end up at the top again but it's going to be really cool to see these teams tackle that and see if maybe like the old guard maybe has a regain of motivation or ego and they give everything again because they online together blah 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 i love that angle i love it but please for the love of god please a lot of gaben let's not let's not throw everything away and my 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 Greatest fear is that Gambit for some reason missed that event. That is my yeah. greatest fear. Yeah. Because then I'm, I can see it coming. I can see the tsunami come in and it would be so unjustified. Right. I, so yeah. I, I'm very scared of that. But, you know, what can I say? And it's not even just that, but like it would just destroy the entire narrative. Right. This is kind of like what we've been waiting for for these past five months that Gambit has just been shitting on everybody. Like, can they actually do it online as well? Because that's kind of like the, of the whole narrative. Right. So that's. I don't even give a shit about like what fans would think like it's conspiracy theories or didn't make the event because they're afraid to play online, whatever shit like that. I just like ignore that noise. Fuck it. But like I I would just be destroyed that that like the nerd that narrative is just gone. Like that's why I want to see this event. Like can I can Gabbit actually stay this consistent, right? So yeah, that's just kind of like my um yeah, what I'm looking forward to. We've spoken about it a few times, right? It's like the soft entry. Like this is what this one will be as well. It'll be the soft entry. Like a lot of these guys yeah. are already in yeah. camp environments. Um, For sure. So I I did up uh, I did up I did some work today, guys. Um, so Lucas, bring this one up for everybody. 
And uh, I guess we just jump into it, right? We, we may as well just jump into yeah. the teams in attendance and, and all that kind of jazz. So uh, in two days' time, on Tuesday, uh, the play-ins kick off. Now, the play-ins is made up of um, eight teams from the uh, EPT uh, and eight teams from the world ranking. Um, so the play in starts a bit, o- bit different, bit more nuanced than that. There's like some qualifiers like the oh, ENC and yeah, uh, shit right. like that, but yeah, sure, essentially. I missed I missed that ODLC and Sprout. So ODLC came from uh, the national championship, the global playoffs there, uh, and Sprout came from uh, Meisterschaft. Meisterschaft. Yeah. So uh, the you had Vici from the Road to Cologne Asia, which was the EPT points. Right for the, they were the highest Asia because of the COVID situation. Right, we've obviously got all, all this stuff going on, but um basically we have this opening round is kind of like a sorting round to work out who's going to go through and join the the top eight teams from the ep2 who are sitting and waiting in the wings uh, which will be taking place uh on thursday that will start um so what i did lucas did you did you open up this fucking uh presentation thing can you link it to us as well yeah sure um so Would this nice. this here is uh just just something i just quickly threw together um, and we're just going to go through the brackets here and and, and discuss uh, who we think is going to win, what matches, and we may simulate one, and, and we'll see how close we got after the first couple of days of play because we're going to need to talk about uh, we're going to need to talk about the the top eight teams and who's going to be joining them. So I figured this would be a fun way for us to get there. So let's let's go through these matches because one of the opening games is NIP versus LDLC in a best of one. Now, um, does anybody think that uh, LDLC could be upsetting? nip in this best of one environment now we know it's best of one is always a chance but like what are we talking like a realistic chance uh i think it's well okay uh, i think it's um kind of the same as we would look at any sort of like top team versus like massive underdog it's just like there's always going to be some sort of a chance in like a best of one but maybe like a 10 percent or something like that like most nine times out of ten nip would be winning this one right does everyone agree with that yeah, I think the NIP, LDLC, Mouse, Bad News Bears, Spirit, MIBR, those are, and Complexity, Vici. I think Complexity, maybe Vici not. We don't know like what they're actually like. I think these three matches are like clear cut as as can be. Okay. Mm, yeah, I would love to disagree, but I would love to disagree. Obviously, I'm hella biased for LDLC. Is, uh, some people I really appreciate. Uh, but yeah, I think NIP is just way better overall. Like uh, it, w- it wouldn't be even justifiable because of the best of one. I feel like this, this is that much of a that much of a difference. Um, but yeah, I will still say though that LDLC is gonna prepare this game like, like that is the one game that Counter Strike has ever had in, in the yeah. calendar. Yeah. That yeah. is this one game. So there's probably gonna be a strat for each round and each scenario. Well, that, that is for sure. the coach over there, right? Yeah. He's a massive nerd. I remember him from like back in the day. Like I used to watch Ferg, my Aussie. Like mm. I, he used to play for French teams. Then he came back to Australia. And I remember watching all the movies, and he was in there with Oz Striker and stuff. He's a uh, he's a bit of a a French uh, big brain, right? Am I am I right uh, there? I, I think he's really hardworking. I think that with him, Cav and and Lambert, the um, the IGL, they have this this nice little nerdy triangle where they really want to you know dig deep into these demos and all of that. And the rest of the team, I think Maka, Aji, Maka and Aji are, are two very skilled players. Um, Sixer is finding some sort of level of renaissance at the lower level of Counter Strike after a tough time in Envious. Uh, he's been playing better in LDRC now. But Haka, uh, Maka, Maka and Haji, sorry, are, are quite skilled players. Uh, but what I don't know is that if they will actually be able to, you know, step up to the occasion and, and play the good Counter Strike against NIP during Colo. That that to me is a question I don't have the answer to. Um, we'll have to see. And NIP well, have always been this team that's kind of like the, the a good what would we whatever we call them, bad. I, I think gatekeeper. you use the same gatekeepers. There you go. Um, we've called them like the gatekeepers of uh, of like the top tier because like they're very consistent against like the lower tier teams. Like they they will always kind of like lose against like the teams around them, or maybe not lose, but just like they're not going to consistently beat them. But for the for the up, up and coming teams, NIP have always been kind of like a tough team to get past. Sure. Um. So that's also like an angle there. The, th- the thing is, with all these best of ones, upsets are possible. I think with mm. almost every single one of these games, an upset is possible, but we need to operate under the assumption that some of the better teams are going to win. Um, okay, so uh, Bad News Bears versus Mouse Sports. Was that one of the ones Prof you put in the same bucket? Yeah, definitely. Okay, you don't think uh, Dirty Peak Pete's going to be making any any big plays? <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately not. I mean, uh, it's going to be cool to see them uh, playing some European opposition, but I'm just looking through their like latest results. They lost. 
they play what is this cash cup cash cup mythic spring series cash cup and all four of the last game was against godsend and they lost three one once they lost to extremum lost to liquid lost to godsend again lost to team one so this is not like they don't seem like to be a team that's peak na so i don't see how they could challenge teams like this in europe yeah for, for I mean, every sorry go for striker yeah, I mean, especially like given how if, if we were talking like two months ago when mouse sports were like down in the dumps and just like not being able to beat anybody, I think we'd be having a different conversation. But the mouse sports that we see now that's actually kind of like gotten their shit together and figured out how to play like this is a solid team now. Like it's it's night and day between these two. It's kind of like the same as the first one. Sure. All right. Uh, Spirit MIBR, Matthew, do you think there's uh, a <laughs> chance MIBR can get this? They haven't been looking great since the new boys no. joined. No, no, they haven't. Uh, and, and for this one, if, if there is or if an upset were to happen, I would put it more on Spirit's frail resilience at time. I think that they, they, they have this very uncanny ability to, to shit the bed early on in tournaments. I've seen them miss the mark in some games. Uh, I, it's probably one of the few weaknesses of that team because I, I'm very hyped about Spirit I, and I've been let down a couple of times already uh, in the last few months. I, I might have overhyped them. Um, and I have seen them really miss the mark early on, specifically in the best of one where they're supposed to be the favorite and they have to act up or they have to act as a favorite. Uh, I, I'm more scared about that than I am about MIBR really outclassing a good playing Spirit. I think if Spirit shows up 100%, there should not be really a discussion, but I'm just not sure of that. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to think what map MIBR could do it on as well. Like, oh. it, I, look, the the Spirit roster is a bit of a a weird one, right? The, I think it's it's almost like VP in a way. I I don't know. Like, there's so many skilled players on the team, but for whatever reason, it's just not going honky dory, right, Prof? Uh, we're talking about Spirit. Yeah, you can really talk about tense. MIBR as well. That I mean, too. MIBR is a team that is uh, their results in Brazil are great. And their res results in Europe are like not even close to challenging anything. They just come, they play some games, they lose, and they go home. And that's essentially what's been going on with this team for uh, since they got the team. Essentially, even before I don't remember what what who they were playing for before this five men roster actually joined that might be our, but they were just dominating in Brazil and in Europe. They stood no chance, and that is what what the uh, maniac is saying like i don't see my br stepping up at this tournament it doesn't matter against who they are to some insane level where they can actually challenge teams it's just like if other teams shit the bed then they can beat them because they, they have this level i'd say like a top 40 50 team in the world where they have been for for a long time they can beat teams around that uh, area but not really a top 20 team i don't think there's a chance sure all right striker you get the final say here we going with spirit Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say Spirit. I mean, even if you look at uh, Spirit's results recently, obviously they play two armor events, so they are, they're going to lose two, two CIS teams only. It's not like... But there was also the Virtus, Virtus Pro loss, and like the only one outside of that was like the best of one loss to EG at uh, IM Summer, this was, I think. Um, so, yeah, I mean, most of most times Spirit should be going through for sure. All right, well, do we even need to have a discussion on this one? Or are you guys just happy for me to lock this one in and we move, we move to the, the <laughs> go next ahead, game? Let's go. Or... Let's do it. Sabati. <laughs> I mean, this could this Commit. this is. I'd say. Oh, there's holy! Potential. Wait a minute. He's putting uh, he's putting renegades on us. Uh, there is yeah. uh, some potential, I'd say, for an, for an upset. Like, I, even though Vitality have been looking now pretty okay with uh, Misuta stepping up, uh, finding his his feet in the in the roster. Like, I'd say there is chance for an upset. Like, this renegade team is also pretty pretty stacked. Even without Dexter, they're still pretty stacked. And in a best of one, I think it it can. I was going to have thirty six kills. Well, I I think like shocks and Apex, still lose. Shocks, Apex, <laughs> and Zywu combined make up for the lack of land experience of Masuda and Kyojin, right? Masuda has no land experience, nor does Kyojin. Like, not, as, not as far as we know, yeah. Well, yeah, at least not not, like French level, not on a decent level, yeah. Yeah, so those two, right? This is where we start getting into like we didn't even mention it with Mouse Sports, but like Mouse Sports, B Mass, right? We, we have yeah. A Core played very few. Right, we have uh... even Frozen is not particularly a veteran of LAN events either. So, True. yeah, but I mean, I mean, he's won, he's won like five in a row or some shit uh, at the end of last year. So that's... it's not like he's inexperienced or anything like that. 
and, and in 2019. Don't, don't let ago. it get yeah, away yeah. from your striker. We're throwing Last away year. time. <laughs> but I think, I think the safe bet is vitality here. Now, I think that there's, I genuinely think that there is a world where Renegades could upset in this one here. Just look, we're, we should, because like there's no way that all the favorites win. So we should just pick one. All right, one well, let's match not put to go the other way. Okay. All right, you want to do I, I, just pick I, I one match? Uh, okay, so what match do we go the other way? I'll fill I'll fill these out, Browns? and then we, after we fill them out, yeah. we can go the other way. Because I think it, I, I think it. we're gonna I think yeah I think we're gonna agree on all of these that yes. like the favorites should be winning. There's like always a, a room for discussion for the evil evil geniuses in phase one. That's kind of like an even one. Of course, we can expect either way, but like the rest of them are pretty one sided in terms of like who the favorites are, right? So we should just decide on one match. That's going to go the other way. Well, these two are up for a conversation. Sprout big and EG phase. I, like feel, like, I feel like Sprout is going to do it as well. 100%. I, I they don't always, know why. They yeah, always beat big, especially, especially in opening matches. Uh, Let's fucking like go, this. Spitty. And we know Zantaris is now uh, obviously joining his <laughs> Turkish brothers. <laughs> After yeah. the manager came out and said that's definitely not happening. No, nah, um, he didn't say that. What did he say? He said that there are no official like the, we know what it is requests for a transfer of Xantharis to any other team yeah, yeah but we know what that means though okay this means that they don't have an org so yeah. they won't, won't <laughs> yeah, request like... anything <laughs> <laughs> so what is there to request <laughs> all right so we're going i like the sprout i like the sprout angle, yeah. honestly yeah i think i think if there's an upset go that's going to happen it's going to be this one like out of all out of all of these maybe Maybe there's something to the spirit that might bear one as well, but I think this one is the 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 favorite of the underdogs. Okay, what? does anyone have a uh, yeah, prof? No, I want to talk about like phase EG. Like, oh yeah, I don't even have a know. Coin? Uh, yeah, we can flip a coin for that one. I mean, if, if anybody has an argument on why they think that a team will win this, I'd love to hear it because for me, this is a coin toss. I don't even know who the favorite is. I, I, is there a favorite? Ranking I wise, I don't even know actually. Uh, EG see. are really far ahead in terms of rankings. Yeah, uh, if you look at this. Yeah, but I still I think that that phase are deceivingly better than what they seems. And I, I know it's really hard. It's really hard to think of because if you look at their pages, there's a lot of red and a lot of losses, and it's not looking great. But if you actually dig a little bit deeper and you you start to realize how extremely tight and close these series are, three maps in sixteen, fourteen, and whatever, it's they are probably the Okay, how am I gonna phrase that? They're probably the best worst team right now. Like, that, that's <laughs> yeah. what it is about phase, right? Like, sure, they're down in dumps in the rankings, and we can laugh about it, we can meme about it, but I don't think you want to play phase. Like, you just don't want to play them because this this could be this could be a hard time. So, uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna set them short on that one. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on that stock for a bit. Okay. Yeah, I mean the the um, LAN experience is all obviously in their favor and shit like that. Uh, they they've got like the most veteran players in the game, so um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I see what you're saying. I wonder how much of a factor that's going to be, right? Because EG Who every the time knows, they've right? had to play has had to be a, a boot camp, right? In the last year, that's right? Or well, maybe not the last year, but the last six months. So I don't know. I'm happy to go with Phase. Prof, you have to go with Phase. I'm okay with phase. In this All right. One. Look, yeah, I, hope, yeah, I really I would... hope that EG, uh, they had some decent results. Yeah. So I, I hope they can prove that this team can actually deliver something. And they have the first returnee from Valorant, Daps, coming in. So he'll, he'll bring some special spice over there. Uh, maybe, some cypher, the maybe some cypher cams. Who knows? <laughs> uh, uh, he's there as Kunden. well. I saw we did. His, his Instagram. He's with them. He's actually at the event. Didn't we also call him the Canadian Hunden for a long time? So who knows? Did we? Maybe. I, I mean, it makes sense. Honestly, yeah. I like. I like the comparison. Yeah. All right. Let's Are we the... talking about the Cipher Cam or? Let's do the. <laughs> let's do the. Let's do the the loser bracket here, so that we can uh, we can fucking work out who we think is going to make it through the whole way. Uh, so team one would have lost it would be in the loser bracket because they would have lost to fucking OG. Sorry guys, you know I don't normally do this. This is normally prof's job, uh, but I've I've taken you're the doing, reins. You're today. doing so well. Thank you, thank you're you. You're doing so well. Good job. <laughs> I don't even know what matchup you're covering right now. <laughs> uh, go to the second page. Hold on, hold on. Go to the second page. Yeah, I should have said that. Uh, what do we got? EG. I wrote big again. Uh, Vici. Okay, so we're gonna have team one versus big. And we're gonna have EG versus Vici. Should I just fill these in? Yeah. 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 Okay. I. I we. we the, didn't... the one thing I don't know, like, 
who comes in into the next match here? They, there's a mega switch happening uh, when it comes to the round number two of the loser bracket. Yeah. There, there will be okay. a switch come from far so away not, in the bracket. So yeah, so it's not gonna be like a GSL group that you play again. No, like exactly. No, 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 it's not. I so, have the same question. Okay. I have. No, I mean, somewhere. you have to flip it. Otherwise, like the same teams would meet each other again, right? So yeah, 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 yeah. Just prepare for four teams. But there's still, so I think there still should be like a randomizer effect between like which of the two matches it's gonna be and who's gonna fall into which one. Or maybe it's set now, but at least uh, we don't know what it is at, um, at this point. Yeah, that's a good point. I I don't know if I, I I know I don't know if I. Yeah, you don't know if you if you can officially know. That was yeah, your can thing. I say? I I mean not obviously sure. obviously then it's set right. It's not uh, it's not any in any. I mean, sort if of you know the teams, no one that's the. Yeah, I know, I but I don't want to get in trouble here. This is where this is where I have to like I think, actually I think be a little bit responsible. A, I think if there's if there's something you're gonna get in trouble, it's not gonna be this. It's just like a format discussion. Don't I don't think there's don't a... listen to him. He's trying he's trying to set a trap for your trap. I'm here for you. Don't listen to him. Okay? Hold up, hold up, hold up. They, they don't care about anything. They don't care about you, Chad. Let, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I mean, you've already you've already given up a lot of the information. They don't have your interest at heart. I do. Let me see. Here's the difference. They don't have your interest at heart. I mean, <laughs> am I'm I trying to, to, to talk about that on the podcast? It's live right now. I'm going to go and listen. Yeah, with how the matches end up in the lower bracket, like who plays who. That's not a problem. There you go. All right. We got the big thumbs up. All right. Thank you. Bye. Like, he definitely didn't answer. This is just like that was talking. a very good fake phone call, though. Yeah, like, really <laughs> real. I, I, really I heard, I heard the calling, so I, I feel like it was real. That was real. I heard that, that was legit real. Yeah, we can do it. We can was do it. Was it Carmack? Did it you talk Carmack. to Carmack? Was it? No, no, no. I didn't call Carmack. No, 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 no. Um, all right, it's all good. Uh, I can, I can do it. Where is it? Let me find it. I should have prepped it fully. Then I could have done fucking everything with it. Um, okay. Oh fuck! This is gonna. I'm gonna have to work this out. Okay, hold up a second. Um, so we want to know the if winner. It's too complicated. Of... Yeah, we don't have to go into it. You can you can just say that there is there is it's not full randomness. That there is a there is a switch up that is scripted in terms of what teams can play who. You don't have to go into I mean, the, saying yeah, what the, match the... Do what match. Did you say scripted? No, in the sense that it's prepared, right? You know who and we where know who's going to play down. who. If you we, after of each course, match, the you know, loser and the, the winner of scripted. what matchup. Everything you guys fixed. are the worst. You just you just already <laughs> said in chaps. For a few. But we can talk about it. I just asked. He said it's sure. fine. We Go can we can it. actually do it. So I just need okay. to work it out. So uh, <laughs> I got to make sure that I have this right. This is the problem. Like I I wish I could just show this. Look, I imagine it would be okay. So the OG team one sprout and big one would be going. To... I think I have the things on the wrong way, right? Like if you look at this slide anyway, shouldn't it be okay. NIP on the left and uh -huh. it should be the OG stuff on the right because they're the bottom half of the bracket anyway. So like we're gonna have yeah. to just invert our oh, brains like, for a but, second. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so just yeah, it's me, difficult let, to go through like your shit because it's. We can um, do this. Yeah, let okay. me just. We definitely can I work can't it. Move out. It. Fuck. But basically, like the okay, so let's starting from the top. The Nip LDLC Bad News Bears and Mouse Sports one should go to the bottom, which is EG Phase Complexity VC, right? So that's how gonna, it matches up. You're gonna confuse the fuck out of me. What if I just do this? <laughs> um, hold on, hold on, hold on. I will I'm, do I'm this. Ready and for this striker, time. you can work it out. Hold so on. I would imagine. I would imagine the where where we just have VG, uh, EG now, rather. EG hold on, hold on, hold on, going hold on. through. I'm gonna link you something. Okay. I'm gonna send you a link. You can you can decipher it. Just I just need to fucking make a okay. new document. Okay, 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 okay. So that everybody on the podcast, thank you for joining us. Uh, watch clowns juggle. That is this, <laughs> the uh, segment you're watching right and now. And for those listening at home, um, let's you... give some in. behind Sponge. There is a plant on his bed. There is a so... plant on my bed. Uh, I don't know why. It's a pet plant, apparently. Yeah, in the cool. hotel. Have in... you sent it to me yet? Or no, no, no. Oh, I have okay. to. I got no. The plant shit. will stay with him. He's going like, to send it to you. <laughs> All right, hold up. And then uh, Maniac no. apparently has a plushie on his. I do, uh, but I can't see it because there's a white. there's a there's a a, a, a ah, small penguin. penguin. Yeah, a small penguin on the bed. Is that yeah, Tweedy? And that is definitely not Tweedy. And uh, this this penguin is actually following me on every desk I work. So I okay. keep it. I keep uh, it. Lucky, ping, lucky penguin. It is a pretty lucky penguin. Did, uh, you, did you have it during your playing days as well? I did not have it during my playing days. No. Honestly, um, cutest. Did you plushie. have anything like that? Uh no, but I had a song. 
I just okay. thought that was always this thing before every Let's go. tournament. Oh, you want to hear it? No, no, it was... You have to take it, by the way. It was the Port Amsterdam, the Jacques Brel. I'm not going to destroy a song that is so beautiful with my heart. Okay, I don't know so what that is, but I... Thought you don't know the Port Amsterdam? Sounds, Amsterdam? sounds French yeah, to me. You have to listen to Port Amsterdam. I mean, Port maybe Amsterdam. I know it, from, uh, but I don't know the name. But I would never, ever do that to Jacques Brel. That would be... I cannot do that. The okay, no-go. it's coming, Striker. I'm okay. uploading it to my Google Drive right now, and then uh, we can work this out. I know this is the highlight of everybody's show right here, so I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad everybody's still paying attention. I mean, I imagine, I imagine it would just go. I guess we. You're probably maybe we gonna don't be have right, it, uh, but yeah. I just, I just, because I actually have it. The thing was, I didn't want to. I didn't. I didn't use my brain. Um, if I'm going to be completely honest with everybody, <laughs> uh, Actually, this is not something that DSL tend to keep uh, keep private or anything in terms of I, like how t- things are decided and format wise. So I just didn't see how it would be a problem ever. Yeah, I I I am going to assume like that's why I just want to check. You know, I don't want to upset any of the powers that be. Like that's sure. the last thing I want. I already talked shit right. about why I'm in Poland before, this. so I I. I don't want to talk oh too much. Oh my god! Shit. Okay, and then uh, and then you need the upper half. Hold up! Hold up! Hold up! Yeah, I need the. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, the problem is the like bit. there's, there's the numbers, bit. which is just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I it'll don't work. know what it'll numbers work. It'll what. Work. It'll work. Okay, when upper bracket one one is going. <laughs> See, we could get there in the end. Upper Everything back. works out. No one, no one cares about this. Yeah, this is going to be. I was thinking the face value of where we're going with this has to be really, really high because there's so much investment to this bracket we're creating. This is so important. This is. This is the whole event right here. The loser of Upper Beckett two four. What is this? Uh, where the fuck is two four? There we go. Bottom. Yeah, I was right. I'm pretty sure I was right. Okay. Just yeah. So, yeah. Essentially, if we go to the first page, we have NIPL DLC Bad News Bears Mouse Sports. Yes. The team uh, from the from this part, the second match in the lower bracket, will be. A theme from the Evil Geniuses phase oh, yeah, like Steve side. Yeah, yeah. And so then, against the EG, so it's, it's going like to be di- diagonally, let's yeah. say, on our, on our view. So, okay, then... uh, let's just run through one one by one, right? So, okay. against the EG, where we already have them through to the, to the second round of the lower bracket, it's going to be the loser of NIP and Mouse Sports. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, who do we think so, will lose that? NIP, NIP and Mouse Sports. We think NIP is going to lose? I have that feeling too. Okay. I'm leaning towards that. Everyone with us? No, no, nah, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I don't know. I, I don't feel like it's such a clear cut. I, I, I wonder to what extent we uh, we overrate now sports after the flashpoint run. Sure. I have my we hate an IP on this show. <laughs> if you yeah, yeah, yeah. we love like, where them. do we the thing is, we where do we put an IP until two though? weeks ago and now we hate them? <laughs> where do we put them though? Like an IP as well. Like, I don't see them as like massive favorites any, anyway, so. Yeah, I think they're I think they're on a similar level. The two, yeah. the two teams are very similar. Okay, well, let's let's just have a vote, Matthew. Who are you going for? NIP Mouse. Um, all right, I'll, I'll say NIP. I'll take okay. a risk on that one. Prof, I'll go for uh, Dexter and Mouse Sports. Okay, Striker. I'll say Mouse as well. Lucas, he gone. I'm Danish. I have to say Mouse. Okay, uh, so then Mouse win. It doesn't matter what NIP. I say. I, I look. For me, it's a 50-50 game. I, I don't know. I don't put too much stock in either of these teams, if I'm going to be completely honest with you. I don't think either of them are going to win the tournament. I, I in, a, in a matchup against each other head-to-head, I would flip a coin. I couldn't give you a clear-cut answer on who I think is going to win. Uh, I think that Mouse Sports probably have had more time together, so that would be the reason I'd lean towards them. So who did we say the loser that's going to play against? Uh, EG? Uh, EG, yeah. Okay, so on the EG. second page, I'm adding it in right now. NIP... We'll be playing against oh. EG. There you go. So now that's kind of rough for. There you go. Now it's that, yeah, it makes That's kind of rough for the EG phase loser to actually make it. It up, is. But yeah. See yep. now this is important. What we're doing now, yeah. everyone sees how yeah. important it is. Now all it's right. all worth. If we Next go one up from page one, Spirit yeah, let's versus go. Vitality. Oh, okay. Uh, Spirit versus Vitality. Uh, that goes to. No, uh, against. Really oh, okay, tough. Spirit Vitality. All right. Uh, I think Vitality wins. A definitely more consistent team. Where are we yeah. going? I think if Vitality oh, makes okay. it to the best of three in the winner bracket, then they would win that game as well. I think so. Striker, Vitality, or Spirit? Um, Actually, well, doesn't matter. I so think three of us already said Vitality. So we've already said yeah. Vitality. Yeah. I was. I think. I think it's not so uh, really so clear cut. Body. But I think it's just because I'm not super sure where to place Spirit right now. Okay. So it's uh, yeah sure if you if you guys all agree might as well just go with Vitality I just don't know I'm not sure actually. So who will Spirit play in the low bracket? Uh, just looking at that, 
Spirit Vitality, that's UB22. UB22 is OG going to 1516. Uh, OG Sprout, yeah. True. OG Sprout. What? Uh, uh, to the I like mean, the team one, one uh, oh, team yeah, one yeah, okay. uh, so big, so big. Yeah, team, so team big, one big. Oh shit! Oh shit! Big versus. Spirit will have to play big. Okay. Okay, that's a game. These are good games. These I don't are know. Exciting if, games. I don't remember seeing a spirit big game ever. I, I mean, feel like the second round of the lower bracket is going to be only bangers. I mean, there's just Probably. none it's of these so games are going to be. You know, to even get into Cologne, it's going to be a lot of. It is. It is. You see. You see the list of teams we have, and like. There are not that many teams. There are not that many teams in in the list of the planes who you think you know what they're gonna make it 100. percent There's no discussion. Like, yeah. There are not that many teams, and there also aren't that many teams where you say they're never gonna make it. So you end up with a lot of teams sort of in between where you're not exactly sure what would happen if the matchup. Right now you say okay, you have to decide between big and spirit best of three. Yeah, good luck. You, you know what's also fucked up? Like it, we have all of these best of ones in the first round, and we, if you have like three upsets, upsets, yeah, if we have yep. three upsets. That's gonna fuck up a lot of things for for the big teams that want to get go, go through. Uh, that's gonna be all right. Let's do this. Sick. Let's do this. Let's speed run the rest of the planes, and then we'll move to like a bit broader, right? Because okay. this is I'm, I I unfortunately made this drag, so that's my bad. I apologize to everybody. At home. Uh, you're fired. OG Sprout. I think we're gonna go with OG. Yes. Okay. A complexity phase. We're gonna go with complexity. Or no? no I think we have to. Okay. Just, I guess we have to. Yeah. Okay. I I'll, I can pull with that one. Just if, just because we're playing the favorites here, right? Also, yeah. also kind of, also good land team they were at least when we had them on land like two times in the last yeah. two years. What? Okay, LDLC bad news bears. We're gonna go with LDLC just for the fact that they're European. I, I, yeah. yeah, I'd give them. I'd give them. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah yes. probably. Okay, so who does LDLC play? Striker. Uh, LDLC. I'm just one second. It should be. Wait, I'm just gonna look at this. It's gonna be Spirit? here. No, no, it can't be Spirit. It has to be. No, somebody. I'm lost. I'm lost. No, it should be the. Um, fuck. A phase complex. Yeah. Phase. Yeah. Phase. Yeah. Phase. LDLC versus phase. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's okay. that. That's a very winnable game for LDLC. Yeah. Uh yeah. If they can, if they can actually mentally look past the nicknames on the server, and it's not always that easy to do. But yeah, Mate, I you agree see with how you. many threads Sixer gets made about him. He gets more <laughs> threads made about him than any of those other players do. <laughs> I got so beta the other day. LDLC were playing a game, and I loaded up HLTV, and there was all these threads that were like, Sixer, what the fuck? Sixer, oh my god. And I kept nah. going to all the threads, and I was just getting <laughs> fucking baited. But I thought he did something sick. <laughs> fucking, they got me real hard. Okay, so that means the winner of RNG MIBR will play the loser of... Oh, they play Sprout. Okay. Oh. That's... Oh no disrespect, that's a make. very that's a very nice opponent to play for a qualification into Cologne. Isn't it? Yeah, that's a shame. They beat big. That's that's not a bad run for Lil yeah. Sprout at all. This is where this is where actually we can see sort of the consequence of winning that best of one, that sixteen fourteen instead of fourteen sixteen, yeah. that then puts you in yeah. that position. Holy. Okay. Yeah, but, but the thing is, like, if two matches go differently, we have yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Everything is going to be yeah. completely <laughs> different. But uh, but it, I, your but we the had implication, a good time doing it. We had the implication time. is is there though? Like the, the importance of the first match is is fucking huge. Oh Does, fuck! Uh, the Renegades versus MIBR game. I just put Renegades, but either team could win that one, right? Like I think we're all all think that's probably a fifty fifty. I think it's edged towards Renegades. I would say, My, but I think then again, easy. Really? Okay. Yeah. I, th I think yeah, just towards I the Renegades. On but the easy, uh, I easy. Like, if we talk, yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Sega. Yeah, uh, I'm more swayed by MIB uh, by my lack of confidence in MIBR than than the other way for for Renegades. Okay. So there, there you go. That's fair enough. Uh, all right, let's do this. We jump right. jump into the third page, right? Because this is where we're gonna fucking get into something a bit broader. Because with the play-in thing, I just wanted to do a bracket. We'll check in after the play-ins or our next show, and we'll see how close we were. See how fucked up it was, right? This was basically us picking the favorites in a lot of those games. So we'll wait and see what happens there. But on the third page, if Lucas, if you can go there, these are all the teams. I have the logos on the side. Let's go through these, right? So getting grouped, right? I think we can we can probably fly through this. Let me object object when you when I when I put something. So Bad News Bears probably gonna get grouped. MIBR, Renegades, Vici, LDLC. Uh, this is for the main event or yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, main event or overall? Just That's overall. everything. They're not gonna make okay. it like deep. Uh -huh. They're not and yeah. they're not a dark horse contender or anything, right? So yeah. those are like the easy ones. Quickly, uh, Team One we can put in the mix there. Sprout we can put in the mix with that one as well. 
Uh, and you want to put phase there? You don't think any dark horse? Some, maybe someone wants wants them as a dark horse. I I would put them as a dark horse, one hundred percent. Okay, you would Ooh. I would? Yeah, okay. I think they've. I think they've. I think they've shown enough promise for them to like take on some of these some of these bigger teams at least. Okay. They to have... be honest, I don't even know who who I could pick as a dark horse here. Well, like that this because look how we still have so well, many teams left yeah. over here. Well, right? we're, we're we can, sorting we everybody, step step, right? Yeah. But I, I would never put FaZe in the same discussion as everybody else in that group. So Okay. Well do even, we think... even with the results that they have now, I think there's too much potential for them to do well. Well, this is simple, right? If we just do this, EG, do we think they'll be they get dark horse? Yeah. The EG or Dark Horse? I think yeah, there's yeah. I mean I would never the thing is like now that you put all the like all the like hundred percent outs in one group, I would never put like a phase and an EG in that same category, right? I have another theme for a grouped Yeah. Furia. Ooh. Okay. Ooh, okay, that's a that's a hot take right there. Ooh. <laughs> that is the take. Okay. That is the hot take. Uh, we have talk it. us through it. I mean they are playing with Fonda now. Yep. And uh did they they are now currently playing against Skade. First map, 19-15 overtime win. Second map, Skade, 16-4 on Inferno. So 14-1, Jesus. Yeah, and they lost one win a couple of days ago in Europe as well. Okay. The games without borders that I'm not even taking into account. So since uh, since this like change, I don't think I don't think they're amazing. Okay. That's I, it. I, when I when you take that. in all the other teams that are going to be in the groups, I think they they get eliminated in groups. Okay. I don't think they stand a chance actually. I haven't like the thing is with this this dark horse one. Like what we could do is instead of having to, like I could just add another subheading here, right? And we could just put we could just do something like this. I just make it like this. And okay. Then that way, gotcha. that way, striker will yeah, be a little better. bit more more on board yeah because and... like we're talking about like we're talking about uh putting like a team like team one and uh and a team like Furia and the same discussion right which is just not fair i think even with uh I certain mean, if, results that are going on in the if they in... both lose they're in the same group they got grouped that's it sure. yeah <laughs> so like now we can kind of broaden this conversation a bit right because i think that like big are probably a team right who we could see potentially make it out of the play-ins but they're probably not going to get out of the groups right i, I don't know if there's much objection there EG is is similar, right? They can probably make it out of play-ins, but they're not going to go much further than that. They're yeah. like, like, uh, and and I think that this is where we start getting into the conversations with our bigger team names. Okay, so mm. like dark horses, it can't what, be a top eight I, theme. I feel like it okay. cannot. It cannot be top eight because I feel no, like maybe Astralis can. Like, let's not a top five six team. I don't think so. Would 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 Spirit and OG be candidates for dark horse? I uh, yeah yeah why not? I think these two would be. I I would put them there. What are OG uh, right now? Like eleventh. Yeah, I mean, you, see, yeah. you can see. You can see it right 11th, there on the yes. screenshot if you. Yeah, that's true. That you're yeah. right. Okay. Okay, I could uh, see OG as dark horse. Yeah, I, I've been I've been liking what I've seen from them. Uh, Mantis Evolution, Flames, his first few games, really, really, really looking good. Uh, it kind of makes sense, but not to the point, not to the point where I can tell you right now they're gonna make playoffs. Okay. I, I don't have that in. I don't have the guarantee when it comes to what OG. About, but I can also not count them out. What about Liquid? Where do we put them now? You know, yeah, it's actually, it's an, it's an interesting. It's a very good question. Yes, because you would you would naturally go towards playoffs at least yeah. but the truth is we haven't seen a lot of them they've only played 20 maps in the last three months and and Ooh. the teams have played uh yeah they played summits and didn't play anything since then that's right? the thing like how much do we know about liquid lake don't I mean, get me that wrong could be, playoff, uh... that could be amazing though that could be what they needed but i don't know but they can't come in as a favorite right they're nobody no. they're, they're not a favorite for anybody no. But I like, like them in the dark horse category ish. Yeah. I think because just of how black box they are, it almost yeah, has to be, right? Box, yeah. They are. So we could we could do this, right? Like we could probably just throw G2, Gambit, Gambit Navi. probably Navi. grand finalists. Yeah, right? I'll, I'll shift them around. Yeah. Just Gambit, to get them... just throw them already over there. <laughs> I'm happy to do that. I'm happy with that. Um, but like we can we can move a bit more. So Vitality is a name. Do we think they're going to get grouped? Do we think they're going to make playoffs? I think if anything, Vitality right now. Sh sh the best they could hope in our little poll we're having right now is Dark Horse. I don't think they've earned a spot in playoffs yet with what happened. Okay. I, or, or I think it would be maybe a bit too harsh for us to think that they would not make it at all. Or am yeah. I yeah. just being mega biased? No, I, feel I like think Dark you're Horse not. Is, is actually kind of 
Oh, they have Zywood, dude. That like they do you... have the back-to-back -back best player in the world, rookie, everything, genius, Neo in the Zy Matrix cool. player. So yeah, so like you have when you have Zywu, I think that affords you a lot. Um, I think if if I think Spirit are probably going to get grouped, and I think that VP are probably going to get grouped just off recent. Uh, Astralis. Group? Astralis is a hard one. I think I think that I they wouldn't be surprised at all. We'll get honest. grouped. Yeah, I, I like. The, th the best thing that they have going for them is that we all know they used to be able to play well on land. But that's not the same team, though. I know, but that like that's that is where I'm. That's what I'm like. What else yeah. do I have to say? Like, no, but if if okay, let, let, we can we can look at it this way. If there are any teams who could benefit the most from this whole switch of context and setup and whatever, and maybe overperform slightly on short term, I feel like Astralis could be in that bucket. If we're trying to reach, no. Sure. The dark be. horse one, the last hurrah type situation. Yeah, as well. exactly. That's how I see it, right? The the ego takes over. We're together again. There's a lot of eyes on it. It's the time to perform, and and maybe they go beyond expectations, which have been which have been lowered by by just the the, the harsh truth that what happened to them. So, uh, I think they could be they could be inclined to to surprise us. What if we put them in groups so they become a dark horse? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? We don't, we don't yeah. have a lot of teams in we have the power. We don't know we yeah. eight teams there. <laughs> well, we only four, need, four, no, we need six. 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 Ah, six. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Six. So, so we have four. Gambit. We have four. Gambit as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But you those are the double. names right now. Yeah. Where do and... we put NIP? NIP is nowhere right now. Yeah. I yeah. don't know. I don't know. <laughs> For me, it's group. Yeah. 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 <laughs> are you but, serious? Or? Well, I don't know, man. Like, the... what are they? Fifth in the world right now. This is the problem. They don't feel like a fifth in the world. That's true. No, no, the, no. But the it's field, very... the field is super unknown right now. That's the problem. The yeah. field right now is so unknown, right? Like even with the teams we're putting in playoffs, these could be so ridiculously incorrect. It's not even remotely funny, right? Like, I don't no... think it can be. I think these four teams that we have in the playoffs are pretty, pretty, pretty set. Maybe okay. heroic. Heroic is maybe the doubtful for me because of land and maybe mm -hmm. this like Hunden situation and all of that shit going on. Maybe there's something there, but I think G2, Gambit, Navi, Heroic for the playoffs, I think that's like very, very solid. Okay. Like yeah. three, three out of four, 99%. So NIP? Oh, I like do... NIP in like the Dark Horse yeah, category. Yeah, and I but they're a top five team. They have to be... <laughs> I mean, they don't feel like a top five team for sure. Like that's only, even just because of the the changes that happened recently. Like it's too still too fresh to me from uh, for me to just like be confident in and just like running yeah, through. Who the do playoffs, we put in right? playoffs if we are not putting? I mean, we don't have to put six teams in the playoffs, true, right? Like we have, have to be bang like on. just two out of the dark horses will make it on top, right? So mm -hmm. yeah, that's how it should be. Right, there should be the yeah, yeah. as well. Who will make it? I, yeah, I say phase grouped complexity grouped. Okay. Yeah, I would agree. I I feel like complexity have plateaued for a long, long time, and this is typically the type of competitions where they would not make it past. You know, not make that next step. So where uh, do we want to put NIP? Well, I personally uh, would put Horse, them in Dark Horse. I, I I think they have they kind of deserve to be there. And also, like with, with all the changes they've been having, one of the argument that I that I usually bring up is that uh, I, I'm personally not a fan of all the roster changes they've made and all of that. But even then, they've been able to achieve. Yeah. Relatively great results, shifting around players, sure. DTR, LNZ, changing, and still showing a decent counter strike. It's so, hard to argue with that, yeah. Exactly. You you have to, even though I don't really appreciate the, the I don't want to say the protocol. I mean, you have to respect what they've the been results, able to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Or so, you don't have to. You can just be a bitch and complain all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. I guess you just punch the sponge away. Man, I didn't even complain about it. I was just sticking up for fucking people from management in a team talking shit for no reason. I didn't even fucking, I didn't say shit about <laughs> the way they do business. I couldn't give a fuck. I only, I only care when these people start acting like they're the fucking authority figure after they're new to our game. It's like, oh, we're going to come in. I worked in traditional sports. Ha ha. Cool, dude. Um, <laughs> good for you. Uh, that's really fun. Okay, so this we have year, one? I think this is pretty good. Yeah, this is actually I like look of it, yeah. yeah. I think that like the, the the Astralis one is probably the one that I'm being the most harsh on, right? Mm. But but at the same time, I think like we we got to start like we if we're living in the now, they're not looking great, are they? Like especially yeah. with that question we had Matthew before during the fucking sponsored segment with Bitskins we were doing, right? Like they they had a rough yeah. go of it at, oh, yeah. uh, at I am Summer. So they, they, uh, 
there is no denying there is no denying that there are structural limits to what Astralis can do. That's just it. That's the roster they have, these are the roles they have, and what players have to do to make it work. There's no denying it. Now, are they legendary players? Yes. Have they achieved something incredible counter strike? Yes. But now today, in the now as you're talking about, I wouldn't give a fighting chance against almost any of these playoff teams. I wouldn't give them a fighting chance. It's just it's just the way it is right now. And it's yeah. a testament to where Counter Strike has how Counter Strike has evolved and, and how high the level is now. It's just it's not gonna cut it. I don't think so. This do we have been, yeah. do we have much more to talk about Cologne? I, I, I know you tweeted about you know uh, teams that could make a roster change in the in the player break. So maybe we can use this to like pivot into that conversation just quickly. Yeah. Like for me, I think Furia comes to mind first. I think uh that kid safe safe however it's pronounced yeah is just like makes sense probably for them as a as an option as a brazilian opera to fit okay. that role for for furia or, or if not him there are a couple of other guys uh, in brazil that could that could fit into the team it just seems so easy and simple to to kind of solve that problem for them the fury is one on that list uh i think astralis is one just based off of the rumors of that course, we're hearing, yeah. which yeah. i think also implicates complexity um those three are the at the top of my my I, di I didn't have furia there but i think you you know if honda doesn't have a good performance here then and furia can make some more aggressive changes why not um looking at this list um vitality when, uh, no mouse no. no i mean there's uh there's an there's a shout for an ip obviously if uh if they don't really because they players. They've basically given um, given L and Z until the player break kind of to prove himself, right? That that wasn't the announcement, at least. And obviously, things might have changed since then. But I had an interview with L and Z just like a week ago, where he pretty much uh, shared that sentiment that that like he feels like this is like the last chance to prove himself, at least that the last chance he's been given so far. So there, that's obviously an angle for a, for a roster change in the in the. Uh, in the break, because if he doesn't really perform, or if they've already decided that they want to go another way, um, then obviously they're gonna they're gonna do something else. What about Liquid? Uh, I, I have no idea about Liquid. I would just can we have that conversation after the tournament? Sure. Because I actually have no <laughs> idea. No, and actually I don't have an idea. I was just gonna bring up I was just gonna bring up VP and when do we start talking about it and if we do. That's yeah. the thing. Who would when be your, and if that who would I, be the I, player? I actually I actually don't know. I actually do not know. Uh, I would probably, not... yeah, probably off... Kickert for me Ooh. would be the player to to look at. Mm. It just feels like with, with Yakindar and Buster, he just doesn't have a role that actually fits him that well. Because I feel like he had to accommodate, and now he's in like kind of a flux where he just isn't isn't living up to what he was doing before and i don't think it's just like his form i think it's just where he is in the team and what he's doing um and of course when you have your kinder who's doing what he did but better then you're gonna let your kinder do it but uh, i think the, you could maybe find a player that fits in uh, a bit better and doesn't rejig the whole team right because if you're removing sanji then that's uh that's a big big change what about big yeah, uh, I mean, there's, that, yeah. there's that rumor, right? Sure, yeah, could that be. is Antara's rumor. Antara's, Faven. Imagine Faven beating them in... Matthew in, uh, speaks German. Cologne. Maybe he knows something. Yeah, I could uh, maybe be as a fly on the wall. And <laughs> no, I just feel like Big Big are right now exactly where OG were before they make the changes. You know, they've, they've reached that, that point where you right can now. actually... You know, th that's the next step. It is the next step. Like, whatever you have accomplished, you've rotated around positions, roles, maps, they've even changed the veto, they start playing Inferno, removing it again. So that that is the next step. And I'm usually quite heavily against uh, being overzealous and changing players left and right. But for big, they have really given an honest try to this lineup. They've achieved some great things, uh, but now there are limitations, I think, in what they can provide as individuals. And yeah, it would be time if you're not happy where you are. Because also, I'm just going to put it out yeah. there. I'm just going to put it out there for one second. Counter Strike is probably the only, or esports, it's probably the only discipline where not being number one is unacceptable. <laughs> that's just how yeah, it is. That's how that's the world we live in. If a team is not number one, it is unacceptable and it should be changes. Think about tennis, think about football and these clubs that make the playoffs of Champions League or a, a tennis player that is, that is top six 
maybe seven, maybe five, maybe one day he makes it to the semifinal of Wimbledon and it's insane and we're all going to celebrate his career. No. In Counter-Strike, if you're not number one, you suck. You have to change. Yep. So that's why I always try to keep these, these glasses when I look at a team and trying to realize, okay, where, where are they? Where do they want to be? What can they do realistically? And if there is a disconnect, then yeah, let's make a change. But also maybe big is just exactly where they belong. Yeah, I, I think that's a fair a fair Great way to point. look at it. Yeah, that's that is one of the things that you know I think that is sorely missed, right? What 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 shame is there in being a top ten consistent team in sure. the world in Counter Strike? Like, just look three or four years back when Big didn't exist. Where was German CS? Yeah, like there there is nothing. I mean, there is not. There are teams in the top 30, 40, like sinners from Czech Republic, but from Germany, right? A big country with a lot of players, history in the game, but they didn't have a team that could compete at all. So when you look at it from that perspective, and they're not a, a team that is a massive organization, right? They don't have the biggest budgets. They're not uh, Cloud9 with, I don't know, 900 million Forbes evaluation and stuff like that. So they're a decent German organization fighting and, and like doing well overall sure all right uh let's should we move into playtime boys yeah let's all right let's move into playtime and we'll close it down uh roll the bumper lucas And we're back from the break, uh, or the bumper. Uh, I don't think it was a break. I think it was just a bumper. But anyway, uh, we're here, and we're going to do the Parry Match Matchmaker. Maniac, you get more buttons to press. I hope you're ready to do a little bit more thinking. I uh, I actually don't really know what I'm going into, so... Well, this is go. this is fun, because I don't normally know either. So Lucas will send you a link. I forgot and, uh... what, I, what I made here. I had something. <laughs> it was something pretty dumb. Uh... Lucas, did you send me the wrong link? I think you sent me Maniac's link. Because I don't have a link right now. I can Let me, do I'll, not... I'll send it. This is the one you want. This one right here. And uh, uh, I have to click on that, which I have. Okay. And Lucas, can you post us the other one for everybody else to see? So essentially, you have some, some terms and some descriptions okay. that you need to connect it, what you feel fits, uh, fits best. And this is uh, usually we do some <laughs> players and stuff. And here you have like, <laughs> it's wishes. It's a good one wishes let's say you essentially in this game you are god and a time time traveler and gaben in once so you can traveling god okay 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 and uh <clears throat> so you can say what what you want to have changed uh, regarding the game or maybe some other things right okay and talk uh, through your logic yeah yeah okay so I, there's one we can already tackle uh because <laughs> The Renegades versus Titan, we should live as is because that's my connection to chat. I think <laughs> this is way too important for that to disappear. I would I would personally be very upset if that wasn't brought up every two months. I actually have an alarm. I have a More reminder on my phone. Um, I actually I cannot show you guys because it's on a special app. But I have this <laughs> countdown going on. And I know every 47 days uh, is going to be mentioned, right? Uh, otherwise, I have to make a phone call. I have to make sure that chat is okay. So <laughs> now, right now, we're good on the timer. Yeah, I am Cologne is running around the corner, so the timer is going to be reset very soon, and we're going to move on to the next forty-seven days. So Renegades versus Titan is going to stay. That is for sure. We leave as it is. Now, if we if we get into uh, if we get into the thick of things, right? Um, if there was anything that I would really completely change if I could, uh, not pretending that I have the absolute solution to everything, it would probably be the event schedule. Uh, we had a big discussion, Chad, uh, you and me in, in the green room, the IEM summer, and we talked about, or we, we, we fantasize about a potential structure when it comes to Counter-Strike and, and organization and, and different level of prestige for tournaments with a system that makes more sense. So I, I'm not going to pretend like I have the perfect formula because I don't, uh, but this would probably be the thing where I believe there is the most to be done in Counter Strike, and where I have to click the buttons. Okay, I apologize. Yeah, yeah. I thought I could just talk about stuff. My bad. Uh, so, uh, blah, blah, okay, and then the event schedule. Boom! I clicked on it. Um, so yeah, this would be the one. Uh, I don't know how much deeper I have to go into my my logic behind, no, but yeah, sense. but probably uh, that's what I would go uh, the deepest. Um, now, when it comes to map pool, I'm gonna pick uh, incremental change. And this is going to be a, a little bit controversial here, but I can also 
picture a world where we are being a little bit more active in terms of map rotations uh, and, and where that becomes an actual attribute that teams have to have to be at the top level. Their ability to tackle a new map, make decisions in what map they want to play or not. Um, in, in different ways, we have other games that do that. And I think it, it brings a, a lot of freshness into a game where you could have teams who become very good at certain types of maps, and then you have rotations. And I could see like I could see like the next level development for our game. That that suddenly, you know, we could imagine some maps playing like seasons, like or not not season the map, but like per season. There's a season yeah. that's gonna be this map, and then the season's gonna mm -hmm. be this map. And just a little bit, we we made the tennis parallel before. Just a little bit like tennis, where there is you can play on grass, you can play on clay or indoor or whatever. You have you could have teams that become expert at certain maps. So I could see a, a bit more changes when it comes to map pool. Um, I think that could be an avenue for our game to become a bit more active and, and ever changing and evolving. And then when it comes to oh okay maybe the maybe the match length would be the second one then the uh what is it like slight adjustment is that what the one i need to pick now yeah yeah i mean you can adjustment? you can pick the same twice if you want as well oh i thought i had to do i have to yeah, oh, yeah. i thought i had to match everything but yeah the match length slight adjustment i i i am very selfish i love counter strike and you can i can watch as much counter strike as as i need to but i i could see a world in which we could go back to like mr12 with the same implications for rounds like i can i can picture that the weapon balance i'm actually not really i don't have any problem with it honestly i'm gonna stay wait and see because i currently don't have an open uh crisis with any weapons in counter-strike really so that that's where i stand but yeah the match length yeah i could i could imagine reducing a little bit um so that the intensity goes higher and we don't have these seven hours best of three so yeah i, I could imagine that we just need someone to work out a counter to the CIS teams. That's all we need. You know, just, just work it out. Just just make sure we don't have to sit there for a minute and 55 seconds every single round. Um, but that was, that was yeah, I, I, I think most people would agree with a lot of those things. Uh, so, yeah, bang on. All right. That was our Parry Match Matchmaker segment. Uh, Prof, did we get any questions for Mania? Uh, there are questions. Uh, were there any good Twitter. questions? I, what I should have said. I'll, I'll have to say that I didn't actually read through them. Right. Uh, but this I, is the best I'll, time to do it. I'll, I'll link it and uh, I link tw Twitter thread. So if you find anything that seems interesting, we can we can throw it in. Uh, overall, we covered a bit of this already. Dark Horse. Yeah. Um, uh, we just got a good ask... one here coming from, from Ricky Mist. That yeah. one yeah. you're about to read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just ask Sponge to not overreact as the lone savior of CS scene and stop that cringe <laughs> editing of fire under his name wherever he rants. I'd love to listen to Preston Strikers' views too. <laughs> um, thank you, Ricky Mist. Keep up the good work. Uh, I, I hope Cold Zero sees the post, man. I hope he sees the post. I hope he sees you with the picture of him there, man. Keep it up. Um, Matthew. Tell what me. is your take on decreasing viewership? Is it because of saturation, lack of star teams, etc.? All right. Uh, how many hours do we have? No, uh, joke aside, <laughs> jo joke aside is actually a, a subject that I've been kind of uh, thinking about. I think there are a lot of factors to be taken into consideration. Um, the, our calendar, and we're talking about saturation, I'm not going to pretend like it doesn't play a role. Uh, I think that would be disingenuous, and it would probably miss a, a part of the problem. But we definitely have to think of contextual factors right now, i.e. the world opening up again, people having the possibility to leave their houses, uh, remote office, remote working, at least in Europe, is not uh, mandatory anymore, which means a lot less people are actually at home working and potentially watching a stream on the second PC. There are tons of activities that people love to do outside and that they can, and I completely understand that. Um, we also have, obviously, the Euro going on right now, which is something big. It's a huge, um, you know, sports activity, rendezvous, social gathering, whatever you want to name it, that's happening, and it, it triggers a lot of, or it, it, it brings a lot of eyeballs on that one. So I think it, there's a lot in, in the context. I personally have no doubt about the future of Canastray. So if you're listening and if you are afraid for the game, fear not. Okay, fear not. Counter-Strike kind of is here to stay. Uh, I think all factors considered, we are doing really great. Uh, and it's amazing what Counter-Strike kind of has been able to do last year. What, what's happening right now, I believe, is nothing more than a lot of factors crashing into each other, intertwined. That explains that less eyeballs are in front of the computer. 
that is my reading of the situation. Um, so yeah, that's my take on it. Look, there's keep also the, keep the flames. <laughs> Uh, there is also the thing with uh, the viewer, not the viewer, but the player number is going down. If you if you saw that, then a lot of uh, these uh, secondary esports, not secondary, that sounds wrong, but like esports uh, <laughs> coverage sites covered that with the classic headline: "Is CS:GO dying? Loses 17% of player base." But this is also the month where uh, the CS:GO update came out, where essentially. Prime was no longer free, so you need mm -hmm. to pay again to to get drops and stuff like that, which essentially means that people that had like bot farming accounts had no, maybe not no purpose, but if they had the free ones, they had no purpose of running them unless they paid. So that is a thing which is going to lose you active active player numbers, which potentially weren't actual player numbers anyway, didn't really help anything. And even with that, we still have like a decent number of players all the time plus all, all of these things that uh, that maniac mentioned euro summer uh, lockdowns ending and stuff mm. like that not as fun though as saying counter-strike's dying though is 17 percent less so that's essentially like dying that's, that's the game's done. Boy, if we go 17 percent every month from this like <laughs> fixed number, it's gonna take a long time uh yeah <laughs> but if we go the... 150 000 every month for the next 10 months, there'll be no players in CSGO anymore. Guys, uh, this will be the final episode of h TV confirmed ever. The no, we'll still continue, the game making, is dead. The, we'll continue <laughs> making the show, but it's going to be just us talking about like. Here's a question. Um, something that we kind of talked about when you're playing career as well, because it was kind of a relevant thing at the time. Has Maniac's degree in, in psychology helped him in his players slash talent career? Um... I, I want to say yes in both, definitely more in, in my talent career than players. Um, I think that even before doing any degree, I always had an interest for understanding how human beings just function as a whole. And, and I guess that is that was one of my strong suits when I was still playing, um, being a good team player, but in the very broadest of sense, not just on the server, but also like, you know, helping the team function and kind of asking yourself the good question at times, knowing how to tackle hard moments. So as a player, a little bit, uh, although most of it was actually just a natural interest for me. But now uh, I think as, as a talent, but first of all, being freelance, you have to handle all your shit together or rather alone. Uh, doing a degree will help you do that. Uh, I think that and that's also for the people at home. Uh, a degree will teach you more about knowing how to get shit done than it actually will about learning the stuff you're learning about. That That's what I got away from uh, with university is just learning. This is what I need to do. This is when I need to do it. That's the time I have to do it. Good luck to you. You do it. And you you get to, to figure that out on your own. How do you work under pressure or not? So in that sense, university helped me being independent and knowing myself how i work in good conditions so that helped me that helps me a lot of course as a freelance and and yes i think there are some themes that i can always talk about at the desk i don't know emotions communications goal settings whatever conflicts that that will help me a little bit plus you have to be around us who are a bunch of fucking mentalists all the time so well I mean, it's really cool because no one suspects I'm actually probably the worst of all. That I can just <laughs> listen and, you know, nod silently, thinking like, oh, they get there. They're so cute. If only they knew. So, yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> this is all good. <laughs> All right, uh, crazy guys, side's gonna come out at some we, point. We, we had a, we had a we had a bunch of questions, but most of them we already covered, like about like top fours and how do we think set, such team is gonna go. Somebody wants to know where you store all your suits, but I feel like that's a very self-explanatory answer. Well, Probably in a closet. Sorry, I, di I didn't hear. Yeah, I have them. I have it in a closet. I, I have a dream though that one day I'm gonna have a walk-in closet in one okay. of my, in with my just apartment. Suits. Not not only with just suit, but you know, I have this picture in mind where. You, you walk in the closet, right? And you have everything that's organized by color. So you have all your different shirts and suits in, in like a color organization with the shoes down and then the belts and the watches and the ties and the handkerchiefs. I can see it. I'm, I'm not anywhere near that, but I, I can see it. It's one of these things I can imagine. I, I don't think I've ever owned a suit. Like I've owned <laughs> jackets, right i've never owned a full i've never worn a full suit in my in my life but i can still picture what you took i always think it would be nice but i never end up there i never i never get there you never, I never went get to around. you never went to a funeral or a wedding or something where you just needed a full suit i've never been to a funeral okay. um and 
because I've run away from all my problems. Uh, and uh, I've never been to a wedding. So that's because all of my... You don't have friends? <laughs> no, like... Oh, that was really... Uncool. No, like, everyone who gets married in Australia, like, I, I just don't go home because I'm doing Counter-Strike and I'm a shit friend. So, yeah, it's uh, it's easier that way. In Australia, you don't wear a fucking suit to a wedding, mate. You wear thongs and some stubby shorts and a, and a singlet. That's that's about it. Well, it's the hot, well I was going to say Hawaii, but obviously <laughs> you're kind of like your own place. All right. I think we're done, boys. Is everyone happy? Yeah. yeah. No. Oh, okay. We've well, been here for three hours. Man. Yeah, no, I think we're Matt, happy. Matthew's uh, going to want to get to sleep. We've got to get up tomorrow and do some fucking media at some point. So, uh, yeah, that's been uh, that's been the show. So thank you, Matthew, for coming on. Thank you for joining us here Thanks. this evening. Uh, thank you for all the viewers. Uh, shout out to our boy. How do we say his name? Striker, the, the Swedish guy. It starts with an L. Lagu La something. Uh, Lagu 15. Yeah. We love I mean, him, man. he's a big fan. Obviously, watches all our stuff. So yeah, thanks. I was, I, I, you know, it's just pulling your leg at the start, dude. I hope that you you keep watching, and I, I love the fact that you're passionate about Counter Strike. Um, I, 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 I don't know, I don't know how to help you with your concerns, but uh, I hope you keep watching. I hope you keep supporting CS. So, uh, everybody at home for watching the next show. We'll do it next week. Uh, we'll do it fucking Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Wednesday, yeah. something like that um and uh yeah we'll we'll see you guys later hopefully you enjoy cologne goodbye Add some fun to your space with Extrafy, designed in Sweden with focus on quality products built on experience. You're looking at Project 4, their fourth generation of products with super cool colorways to stand out, with matching sets to satisfy with a solid B4 bungee, lightweight ergonomic M4 mouse, the K4 keyboard is fantastic, all of which are performance focused, and finish it off with colorful GP4 mouse mats that are bold in design and smooth on the surface. The retro theme in particular has got the feels. Complete your setup with Extrafy. No regrets. Guaranteed. These bombs go to the teammates. I want to see you fall them fast. Win the round. Win the game. Parry match. Your esports teammate. teammate. Stuck ranking up. Lost the motivation to grind. Bored of clicking heads on AIM maps? Get some color into your game. Bitskins.com. Buying and selling skins made easy. Tons of payment methods and instant cash outs. Just choose your dream skins, select your preferred payment method, and start grinding again. If you want to play like the pros, you've got to look like the pros. 